everybody. Hey, hi, hello, welcome to Humblewood Yonderbound. Uh, I'm Derek Sorts. I'm your GM for this game. I'm joined, as always, by these lovely individuals you see. Uh, I'm going to have them introduce themselves momentarily, but in before I do that, I do want to say a couple of things. First of all, this game is in support of Fauna and Flora International. It is a charity game. These wonderful people have chosen to spend time every week and play a, a fun game, but also do it for a great cause. So Fauna and Flora International is an international ecology and uh, environmental group. They work to preserve ecosystems, they work to uh, preserve natural habitats of animals, and also to sustain, you know, keep the sustainability of, of natural biomes when they come into con conflict or even contact with humanity. So as, as human civilization tends to encroach, uh, animals can sometimes uh, become you know, endangered. And so Fauna and Flora International works all over the world to ensure a, a symbiosis of sorts and ensure that uh, natural species can can endure as humanity tends to expand. Uh, so you're, if you choose to donate, uh, if you're willing and able, both those things being important together, uh, you can impact a great cause and also impact this game. You can do crits advantages, uh, you can give complications. I'm gonna add something here, maybe a break, maybe after this game, uh, where you can name a ship. Why not? I might as well add that to Horizon's Call as well. Uh, so those are some of the incentives that we can toss around for, for this game. So keep that in mind. Uh, should you have a couple extra dollars sitting around? Uh, also, I should note that this, this game is on Sword and Key. You can find all of Sword and Key stuff at beacons.ai slash sword and key. You can find all of our social links, all of our ongoing philanthropic endeavors, some of our discount codes as well. A lot of the stuff that you'll see, uh, when we hit the, the break time and we kind of put up our ad reel. So everything's just collected in a nice package there. Um... Yeah, uh, I also want to say that we are using music for the first time that is licensed through Humblewood and Hit Point Press. This is one of those songs. We have not yet added all of the the fancy copyright stuff to uh, the like the 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 final the closer or anything. Uh, nothing nothing necessarily in text, so I am saying it verbal. Uh, so this is uh, licensed through the Humblewood theme, uh, copyright 2023 from Hit Point Press, uh, music by Command Creative Studios. So definitely check out uh, Humblewood and Hit Point Press if you like some of the, the tunes that you're hearing. Okay, all that said, let's go ahead and, and go around and have these lovely people introduce themselves and maybe say a little bit about their characters because this is just session two. Uh, so as, as our party is, is finally conjoined, Shadow, if you don't mind starting us out. Yeah. Hi. I'm Shadow. I'm already doing Clarence's voice, I feel like. <laughs> I'm like Clarence. He uses the he pronouns. Clarence uh, is uh, 100%. Well, I guess 99% a bard, uh, College of the Road. And then the other 1% is a uh, warlock. Yeah. Of the undead. It's fine. Of, of the undead. Yeah. Of the good, undead. Good distinction there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're so not going to worry options. about that for now. Uh, no. Liz. Oh, it's going to be so fine. Don't worry about Clarence at all. <laughs> Friends, I'm Liz. Um, I use she, they pronouns. Today I'll be playing Betty Brightpaw. Please do not call her Batilda. Um, she uses she, her pronouns. And we are a uh, Driftkin barbarian, uh, Path of the Storm Herald. So very excited to play a barbarian for the first time. Absolutely. I'm excited to see you play a barbarian. You play a <laughs> Me too. It's gonna be good. Uh, <laughs> next up, Keon. Hello, I am Keon, aka Brother Keon. I use he, they pronouns, and I will be playing Soren Dryspell, a circle of sand druid, and by far the unluckiest lucky little gecko guy you will ever meet. And and he, we find him in this story. What does that say? Uh, thank you, Keon. Uh, next up, Anik. Hi, my name is Anik. I go by she, they pronouns, and today I get to play Mochi, Brightstream, also known as Mochi, the Undeterred, High Priestess, Pope Extraordinaire, a uh, little Maypack Trickery Raccoon, who believes in trickery but not betrayal. Incredible. I love that. Uh, last, absolutely not least, and looking really fresh this this uh, this week. I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to cameras before. That's a really good look, uh, Christian. Hey everybody, hi, my name is Christian, aka a Fluffy Goomba, all over the internet. I'm a TGRPG performer, educator, and event coordinator here in the space. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I will be playing Argus Ironclaw, king of the mountains, uh, Scofflaw, fighter, 
uh, Swiss Drig. His pronouns are also he, him. That's nice. Fantastic. Thank you all. Uh, I'm scrolling to remember who volunteered to do... Oh, it was... The it Shadow. Was, yeah, it was Shadow. It was little Clarence over there. All right. Uh, Shadow, the floor is yours. Uh, what, what we kept you for us? My next action. <clears throat> Year one of becoming a hero. Whoa, don't want to scratch that off. For correction, you're one of being a hero. Uh, luckily, uh, over the past few weeks, I received a few sendings from Ochi. They're having a quote unquote hot raccoon summer. Uh, and they got really good at surfing and they're spreading the word of Hath. Uh, they also got a new friend. I'm a little jealous, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna tell Mochi that. Uh, but their new friend is Betty. Uh, Betty, uh, is a, an entrepreneurial fisher, uh, who really likes selling fish, but also really likes listening to Mochi's speeches. Um, and then I met up with Argus, and Argus is doing great things as the king of the mercenaries. They're not barbarians anymore. I mean, but, but. Bandits anymore, except I guess the ones that are mean are still bandits. Anyway, um, uh, I guess is doing a uh, great relationship work with his brother. Um, and then um, they had sent Killer Queen out to go negotiate with the Pirate King, uh, but apparently, um, the Pirate King is holding her captive, and now we must go, uh, definitely beat the Pirate King with a chair, but also rescue Killer Queen. Um, I got to go see my family. Oh, uh, that was kind of nice. They're, they're kind of okay, I guess. Um, and then I kind of also made a new friend. Ha, take that, Mochi. Um, but we'll see where this goes. I mean, Cal isn't so bad. I don't think so. I think he's good. And then we met an even newer friend, who is Soren. Uh, Soren had great adventures. Met up with Buttercup. Buttercup's doing real well. Really happy for Buttercup. And, um... Did you know that you could talk to the to the Alderheart tree? Because I didn't know that, but Soren is having great conversations and I'm really interested to know more about this. Um, but otherwise, we gotta go stand in, in this council meeting and I guess get a new adventure. See you all later. Fantastic. Very well done, Shadow. <laughs> um, please enjoy that point of inspiration. Okay. So, uh, as we go to pick up uh, much as, as Clarence had noted, uh, you all have been gathered for, for various reasons. Uh, there seems to be reasons both within the, the Humblewood itself, within the Alderheart, but also Soren seems to have need uh, back home in the Tangle Wilds. And all of these these needs and wants and, and perils have all intertwined themselves, uh, much as vines are wont to do. And you now find all of your causes similarly linked as, as we move forward. Uh, you have found yourselves joined in front of Lord Asher uh, of, of the, the High Council of the Alderheart who has brought you all together before the statue of most of your, your former friend uh, Marley, which is still somewhat under construction. Uh, but the, the face has been completed, like the, the blade is, of the, the armored arm is, is still under work. Uh, and yet uh, Lord Asher has, has brought you to this very significant place for many of you. Uh, to to ask you to journey to a strange land, a land that most of you have never been before, some of you perhaps have never even heard of before, and has asked you to take on this monumental task to save not just your home, but another's. And so, as I change up the music here to um, another uh, official song, this is called The Great Alder Heart, so we're going to see what this one's like. Um... Lord Asher stands before you, his paws kind of outstretched. It is worth noting also that Lord Asher is now a mustle, which is kind of like badgers and wolverines. It's a it's a playtest race that, that Humblewood has put out. Um, so he's wearing this this blue surcoat with these stars embroidered on it and this this kind of like red um, sash that, that drapes that drapes over it. Uh, and there's a little bit of like weary in his eyes like there he's been he's definitely tarried as as he has a lot on his shoulders but his little clawed paws kind of extend all of you i know it's not an easy thing that i'm asking and i know it is not 
anything I would ask of anyone else, but you all, almost all of you, are heroes of the Humblewood. And the friends that you have brought along and the guide that I am hoping will help you all succeed, I could not put more faith in any other group of people. I understand if you need to think it over, but I hope to have your answer by sundown. I mean, we're going, right? I'm, I, I'm going. I'm going. I promised Betty an adventure, so Betty's going. Uh, yeah. I promise. Uh, I have to. Yeah. Yeah, Betty's going. I mean, Soren's the guide, so Soren's going. Yeah. Betty say that in the third person. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. She's like shifty eyed, looking back and forth between everybody and like this half finished statue of a dead squirrel, and she's just like, yeah, totally, definitely going for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, Moji's been Are telling you, you all about the statue and and Harlow Marley, not Marley. Uh, would have at some very inappropriate point in the big speech nudged Betty going, so that was the guy she wasn't technically together with? <laughs> Just doing all the gossip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Betty, uh, I trust Mochi's judgment when it comes to uh, garnering new followers and, and companions. Are you also a hero of your, your home? Do you have uh, tales of, of grandeur or uh, bona fides? That uh, Betty kind of like strings her vest on one side and like lifts up, lifts up her bill hook, and she's like, "Well, I, I mean, I feed people." A a very noble task, yes. But no. What do you, what do you feed them? She looks down at her net. Fish. I fish. I'm a fisher person um but no close. i'm i'm not a hero oh just betty well, that's something i would expect a hero to say i'm glad to have you as part of this uh, this this odyssey glad glad to be here uh, uh Derek, question. Yeah. Is it just Asher with us, or is it anybody else here with us as well? So you're kind of in, like, um almost a marketplace. So there are people all moving about. Like, he's brought you to a public space, because, mm -hmm. like, that's the statue's kind of in the middle of that. But people are giving you, like, a somewhat decent wide berth. Nobody's bumping into you or seems to be, like, listening in or anything. Uh, But there's, like, shop vendors and everything around, and, like, there's natural light coming through. You're you're not in, you're not in a private space by gotcha. any means. Gotcha. Do you have any questions? Anything that I can set your minds at, at ease about, or not try to cause further anxiety about? Mochi, you do not have to raise your hand. Oh, sorry. Um, transportation? Question mark. I don't have yes. enough money to buy a boat. Um, well, unfortunately, neither does the council at this point. Um, however, we do have enough money to rent a boat. Uh, okay. And we have attempted to do just that. So um, let me pull up my map here because the name of that port, Salter's Port, <laughs> I didn't even pull it up. Uh, Salter's Port will uh, will accommodate for a ship for you um we have we have set everything aside um i will get all of the details to you um come morning i assume that you will be leaving tonight it is a couple of days to get to salter's port at least and you all will need your rest so all of the details will be hammered out i will have a ship name and captain to you uh, come morning. I'm waiting to hear back from a few options. Um, I, I don't mean to say that we are going for the cheapest option, just the most frugal one, if that makes sense. 
that technically means cheapest. But exactly um what that means. Um Um Hey, uh Asher, um yes, Why sir. don't you just teleport us to Salter's port? that technically easier than also paying for our transportation to Salter's port on top of the ship? That is a, a valid point, Clarence. Unfortunately, Salter's port does not have a teleportation circle. Most of the teleportation is from the Avium, and the Alderheart is a significant enough place to have one, but we, we tend to be picky about who can come in and out without going at least past one perch guard. Salter's Port sees a lot of it sees a lot of peoples from a lot of places and is if I'm going to be honest um, a, a bit of a, a risky place as far as our, our security goes um, we, yeah. we've received word that piracy is at its height uh, currently and um, some other less credible threats but um, I'm sure they'll have no shortage of rumors once you reach the port Okay, but more points of contention. So, um, the pirates can't just get on, like, you know, carts and then, like, cart their way up to the tree and still just do as much damage as you're assuming that they would do if they just teleported into the tree. And also, why are you assuming that they would do that? And then also, why is there a whole teleportation circle into what used to be the center of the bandit camp? But, so, but we can't have one to, like, a port? Equivalent point of contention. Um, all right. We're getting into national security here. So, uh, <laughs> to address your first point, yes, they can certainly get on carts. However, most of the, the cliffside of Humboldt is a cliffside. It's not just a beach. So they would have to traverse upwards at a choke point where we would also be able to launch a national defense of Perch Garden, other soldiers, other Minutemen, who would be able to fight them before they got to the older heart. That's... Point one. Point Those cliffs are super steep. I had to keep climbing them with my surfboard. Surfboard. Valid point. The other thing is pirates tend to not want to necessarily invade. I'm mostly worried about other empires, powers, kingdoms, whatever, who might just want to take our resources. Uh, pirates like to pillage, but they tend to do so by ship. And I'm content with leaving them to that. Uh, as far as the teleportation circle, you all did not use the teleportation circle. You used teleportation coins that were illicitly given to you by former members of the council. So we don't have coins that go to Salter's port? No, ma'am. No, sir. Unfortunately, you do not. Okay. Okay. So I really feel like we need to sit. I need to come back here. We need to sit down and talk about how teleportation circles work because I don't think you understand how teleportation circles work. That's a valid thing. You know, Clarence, when you come back from this voyage, should you come back, I cannot wait for that conversation. Did he just say, should you come back? Yeah, no, that's that's legalese. It's just covering his bases. Don't worry about it. We're definitely coming back. Yeah, this guy is so great at Also, legalese. it might also be like that Clarence just fucks off on a different adventure before we finish the first adventure. So you have to like include that option because Clarence really likes different adventures. Okay. 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 Yes. Well, she's trying to get out. I, I'm so not trying Clarence. to be difficult about this, Clarence. I just want to make sure that you all get to the same place all in one piece and that one of you doesn't end up temporarily lost somewhere in space and time. So while Clarence was doing all of the legalese with Lord Asher, um, Soren has kind of just like while this has happened and been like looking from Clarence to the giant that is Argus and back and forth and just like I got a good crew. It's, things will be fine. I don't I don't have to worry about a thing. Yeah. And then walks over to uh Clarence is like, Hi, I'm Soren. Um I like you. Hi, I'm Clarence. You seem pretty cool. Thanks. Um so, um, it sounds like all of you guys are going to be going with me? I, don't I think guess. Argus said yes yet. 
I know. Oh. I can sense it. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. And he like walks over in front of Argus. Are you coming with us? <laughs> Careens um, his neck up. <laughs> yeah, just that's good. <laughs> I do have other duties that do take priority, but I will come with you after that business is done. What other business do you have? Can we help? Sorry for volunteering you guys, but... Oh. <laughs> it would not be the first time uh, this group, or most of this group, I should say, has helped me with issues in the past. Uh, though it is not as dramatic as last time. Mm. Are we slapping someone with a chair again? Worse. Uh, yeah, it's way worse. <gasps> yeah. Um, Lord Asher, if there is a, a place we can speak privately, I believe it is in our utmost interest to do so. Absolutely. In fact, um, the main issue for why you are traveling is not one we should speak about openly. Um, we can meet now if you all have nothing else to do. Otherwise, we can meet later. But um, this conversation can... I want takes utmost priority. Noted. Um, I will see all of you later at the Avium. No, wait, not the avium. That's the that's the college. I will see you at that's the. That's the easy way. Asher, think. I will see you all at the the Alderheart Council room. Ah, this is why we do teleportation circles. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about teleportation circles with you now. You're all over the place with teleportation circles. I thought you liked traveling on the road, Clarence. Yeah, but sometimes it's a matter of convenience. Mm. Mm. Uh, so. Uh, Lord Asher nods to all of you and gestures for Argus to follow him. Um, as you, you all kind of break up a little bit, uh, Clarence, you hear a voice in your head. I thought the teleportation was a wonderful idea, Clarence. Can it doesn't seem like you'll listen too much, but we can change that. Clarence is going to like think really hard to respond back without talking out loud. Yeah, I I guess maybe they didn't have a teleportation in your time. In fact, young sir, I have, uh, I was the one to simplify teleportation. Many of the sigils we use today were developed by my former hands. Okay, you know I can fact check you, right? Like we have books Please on this. Do. Okay, whatever. Um, before we get to uh, Argus and Asher, is there anything else anybody wanted to do just so I can know what we're doing next? Oh, uh, assuming Betty doesn't have people here that she wants to hang out with or meet or whatever, uh, Mochi is 100% dragging her to dinner with Dad. Oh, yes. And 800 aunties, uncles, nieces, nephews, family, friends, whatever. Betty's having a full raccoon family dinner party. Uh, Clarence and Soren also invited. Um, yes. Clarence, you know, Clarence doesn't have to be invited. They're always invited. They know where it is. Uh, but Soren and Betty are just like, oh, you gotta meet my family. Let's go. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Betty has spent the entire summer hearing about Mochi's family, so obviously she is 110% down to finally put faces to names. Very excited. So, You're going to be so confused with the faces and the names. That's okay. That's normal. It takes about a decade. I still forget half the people. Nobody cares. Don't worry about it. At least you to be Camden. Ugh, the worst. What's wrong Ugh. with Camden? That's the worst. Oh, we're going to gonna tell you what's wrong with Camden at dinner. Don't worry. You'll hear everything. Okay. We don't like Camden. Got it. We don't like Camden. Uh, uh, while those of you go to a, a, a Bright Pod dinner, uh, a Bright bright Pod buffet. Um, bright Stream. Bright Stream. Thank you. I need, I need a glossary in front of myself. 
Um, as I'm also coming up with, with new names and places and things. Okay. Uh, let's cut over to uh, Asher and Argus. So the two of you uh, make your way up to the the you know, upper branches of the Alder Heart, where the, the council doors are, where we saw last time Soren uh, in front of those, those intricate double doors. And uh, as Asher pushes the doors open, uh, you find that there's that U-shaped table. All of the chairs are empty. All of the doors are, are closed in here, and then including the door that he closes behind you. Uh, there's that kind of skylight, which is, is leaking some of the, the, day, the, the last light of the day through, which kind of gives it this, this, like, this subtle radiance to the room uh, with this very like, decorative floor. And he goes towards the, the center of the room where it's, you know, it's a little more quiet and, and turns to, to look at you. This is about as private as I can offer you, um, King Argus. What is the issue you need to broach? Give me the bud. Asher. Either you have spies in your ranks, flies on your walls, or your walls are too thin. What are you saying? I received this, and he'll pull up and he'll pull out the the, the taunting letter from Mismith mm. uh, and hand it over to him. I received this missive from the supposed king of the pirates a day before I received your summons to come to the Alder Heart. He'll take it from you and look it over. Argus, I'm, I'm very, very sorry. I... Had I known... I'm not changing this. It's way too bright for this thing. This is called Bandits from Humblewood, and I get kind of what they're going for. <laughs> not, not, yeah, not... Uh, bopping, no, though. Not really. it's no, yeah, it's, it's, it's really it's really bopping. All right. It's just bopping, um, yeah. Argus, I'm very sorry. If I had... I'm not aware of any spies, but that is, I suppose, the point of a spy. I will... I can assure you I'm going to do all of the due diligence that is within my power to root out whoever this... this individual is, whether they are a fly on the wall, or whether they are a, a servant at the door, or another council member... I, I want you to know that I will not stand for another infiltration. I thought I had done my best with this. Weeds always find their way to grow in important places. If there is anything that I can do, you, 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 you have everything within my power to see her safe. I just want to make sure we can get there the best way possible. I know you are dealing with the finances of running a kingdom, as I have been learning myself. But if there's anything extra you can provide so that I can make my... And he, like, he, when he says this next word, it's, it's so irritating. Rescue of my beloved. I would appreciate that. I will help you in your cause. I just hope you want to help me with mine. Love is a... Love is a... focal point for the both of us. You have everything within my power. I assure you of that. I almost wanted to make sure you knew that you weren't as safe as you thought because we are friends, Asher. I would not see a knife in your back. I 
I appreciate that. And let us watch each other's backs in that sense. I have a bit of an idea. Uh, it seems we are playing a game. And someone has the upper hand here. I will send you information from time to time. Letters to, to help you along your way. I continue to receive letters from the the Empire of the Allurans. I, I tend to receive information from an ambassador there. Uh, his name is Denier. D-E-N-I-R. I will pass along information to you. Some of it will be telling if you find yourself being followed, being overheard. And I think in that sense, I will send these letters through several different means. I think in that way, you can uproot this weed. To find your leak is a very important endeavor. Because it's not just my people that are in danger, but yours. Who knows what they already know about this place and mine. We can always assume too much. Unfortunately. I'm to give, I am sorry that I must bring this news to you on such a momentous day. Well, I'm glad at least it was you and not the knife in my back. <laughs> Anything like I will see some perch guard to watch you and your friends for the evening. Not to interfere unless necessary, but I can assure you the utmost safety that I can offer while here in the Alder Heart. But you know better than most that to journey on the road is to leave all safety behind. And that is where true strength must grow. I know offer up his hands. Barbarian style. Yeah, barbarian, absolutely, absolutely barbarian style. Uh, and he will, he will shake his in kind. I will All right. Um, take that letter back and head to the party. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think you get a sending. Like, Asher, Dad says you and Argus should also come to dinner. <laughs> Yes, Asher slumming it with the, yes. the the regular people. Hey, my dad's the guilt master. Okay, but you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> come to the raccoon party. We're all hang out down here. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you all caught last time, but Mochi's dad's part of the council now. He yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's let's code over to. The they definitely did party. not just make him a council member so they could have oversight over him or anything. That's that's rumors and hearsay. You know what? I uh, people talk so bad about bureaucracy, and they're right. <laughs> uh, okay, so we we find ourselves at the 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 bright stream, uh, bright stream buffet. I'm gonna keep calling it that. Uh, but you you find yourselves. Well, the last time I think most of you were here, it had been like tented off with all of the the steam and everything, kind of making this almost like a sauna where it was just filled with with humble folk trying to stay warm, trying to find a, a warm place to eat. And and so it was, in a way, it was kind of like a shelter before. Um, now it, it appears much more like a workshop. And at the same time, it has not lost the, the quality of shelter. People of, of the, the Alder Heart have come to rely on this place in times of, of need. And there will always be times of need for, for some people. That, that, that doesn't make any person lesser or weaker. It, it means that it makes the, the rest of us able to provide and, and create our community as stronger. And the Bright Streams most certainly are people of community. So you all see that the, the table has been lined up with the, the same soup bowl that probably has never been washed, but that's where the flavor comes from. That's what Mochi's dad Lee says. And uh, just this, you know, this uh, cast iron pot that seems to never run out. 
of of warm food to provide and uh, there's there's music playing and kind of like even the the cacophony of the steam that that's pumped out and the cranking of the metal everything has like a percussive like woodwind sort of orchestral effect to it in here where it's there, there's always like the, the murmur of chatter but also the murmur of machinery all about as well and you can see that there are plenty of humble folk a lot of mopox uh, all moving about with their their massive wrenches and you know tightening this or adjusting that um, and then you know a few that have kind of taken off their work gloves and their goggles where you're not sure whether the you know the the, the marks are their natural like mask markings or whether it's you know the smoke that's been blown on them and uh yeah you, you all would would venture in to see uh mochi's dad is is most certainly there just doling out stew to people you can uh argus and, and asher would walk in to see the rest of the party uh already there as well perhaps with a, a bowl of, of something or other um and even mochi's mom is there um dressed in her her avium finery because it is summer it is she is not necessarily have to be there at the the avium so she is has taken a little bit of time to be home with with her partner and the rest of her family and uh as you walk in uh mochi's dad would would look up to you and go oh hi welcome oh asher it's so good to see you i it was great chatting with you earlier at the um at the council meeting it's so it's so nice sitting there and getting to hammer out ideas and and refine concepts and it's just oh it's so nice to be invited to something like that you know ah oh, just love it would you like some slop august it's good to see oh you've gone so big i hear you're a king now uh do i need to bow or is there a ring to kiss um uh my my liege no not my liege somebody else's no. liege uh would you like some slop i would love some slop thank you very much yeah everybody loves slop all right uh all the rest of your friends are over there and uh here's here's a bowl of slop and uh i'm gonna talk to asher a little bit about the uh the fine details of micro and macro uh economics all right so it supply and demand it feels so much like the chatty lunch lady at school just like, uh, yeah how's your grades here's some hash browns yeah yep well, i saw your mom friends. at the grocery i saw your mom Attention at the grocery again. <laughs> lovely lady i love her so much is she drinking again oh no i don't know i <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think I think uh, as uh, Argus comes over with this bowl of slop, I guess we're calling it now. Um, I mean, it's call it whatever you like. Internal, <laughs> good. internal stew. It is technically delicious. So yeah. technically, I, uh, uh, I like the delicious like Internal <laughs> stew. It's technically <laughs> delicious. Technically, I. Uh, Argus, do you want me to flavor that up a little bit? Thank you, Clarence. I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Hey, all right. And then Clarence I think it's is like good by itself, though. Press a digitation, little sparkles. It's a, it's a habit. Can I get some? Yeah. There you go. Blah. Oh. Yeah. And he right? just like <laughs> shoves it. Really helped in winter time when we had to eat just basically boiled water. Oh. Um. Yeah. This will go great on flies. On flies? Mm-hmm. That's what I eat most. This is this is new for me. Are we gonna have to eat flies? No, no, no. You don't have to. That's this is me thing. If you want to, you can. I'm not gonna stop you. But um it's up to you. You don't Betty? Just... <laughs> Do you eat flies? I don't expect to eat it. Uh, Betty reaches over and like lifts up the flap on her bag that she's carrying and she roots around for a second and pulls out a little bundle and un undoes the fabric and holds up a dried fish. Nope. Just fish. I also have seaweed in here. If you would like some dried seaweed in there oh, or seaweed? Seaweed. shaved fish. Wait, seaweed. Wait, Mochi, you eat seaweed now? Yeah, it's a really good snack. 
God. Hot Raccoon Summer has changed them immensely. <laughs> hey, at least Slop isn't suddenly too shitty for Mochi. Guess my family's food isn't good enough for you guys anymore. I'll take that seaweed, Betty. Thank you. Passes it over. <laughs> um, are you guys okay? Or this, you okay, Mochi? This cattiness is common between these oh. two. So okay, it's a rivalry thing. Well, it's also that you become king and suddenly you don't even try the food before you add magic to it. And my dad worked real hard on that food. He's a council member and he's still feeding his people, but no, not Argus. <laughs> I think I hear my mom calling. I'm gonna go get some more. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you say all that and then Argus just laughs like a big old hearty laugh. I did miss that. Attitude of yours. They said I didn't put you. dirt in it. Mm. <laughs> I did miss that attitude from, from you. <laughs> I promise. It's been too long. How have you been, Mochi? I've been perfectly fine. I learned how to surf and I'm traveling, and um, I learned how to speak surfer, dude. Um, and uh, it turns out that if you find the correct crowd within the server dude, like, subsection, and you explain to him that, like, sometimes you just gotta ride the wave and chill things out, then they're really amenable to joining half. Mm. Ah, yes. How is that? Um, Indo pretty... Indoctrination? Uh, recruitment? Recruitment. There you go. There we go. Uh, I mean, we're growing pretty good. We went from, like, smallest religious cult, sect, whatever, to a proper mm. religion, so upward mobility. Oh. And is that still going on with your studies? Or have you Oh no, I'm not going to the... school. Oh. I told mom last last like while I told mom I didn't want to go to school anymore just before we went to your place. Mm. Um and she was cool with it. Ish. There it is. She's happy I'm happy. Um, she is concerned I offered to help dad with things. Mm. Um, but I promised I won't explode any more greenhouses. So I think we're also good on that front now. Um, no, we're good. I've been fine. Nothing's uh, been bothering me at all. Nothing. Sleep like a baby every night. Day, mm. whatever. Betty chokes a little bit on the <laughs> soup and uh, <clears throat> reaches for a piece I met of Betty. Reaches for a piece of bread and just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and it like looks like once Betty is mentioned, like we'll look over at, uh, at Betty. Um, Argus, Iron Claw. Thank you for looking after my friend. Oh, uh, I mean, it's, it's it's nothing. Mochi is we understand each other. I understand what that means. <laughs> I, I traveling and saving the world with Mochi. I, I learned a lot very quickly. I have heard many stories about the adventure that you all went on and it sounds like it was challenging so it was thank you uh, at least you're honest about it thank you for uh saving the world saving everyone saving all of us winter was hard but i'm glad that we had folks like you to pull us through It is a cross I will bear probably beyond my days, so I'll do whatever I can to make sure there was peace for everyone else. 
a noble endeavor. And she raises her glass, mug, cup, whatever would be filled with beverage. <laughs> beverage container. Yeah. <laughs> we'll lift a bowl of slop and then there, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll, like, we'll just like lift the bowl and raise it and then just take it in one. Mm. Clarence. Yeah? You gotta tell Soren about the one time the teleportation didn't go okay and we all got split up and you got changed by like a, a, a snowman yeti thing that turned out to be a druid. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we were we were in like this vault thing I'm about and okay so so just to clarify this uh -huh. isn't teleportation circles this was the coins okay okay, okay. all right it's a little oh, bit oh yeah no the more, rocky thing yeah 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 mm. it was like a little bit more unstable magic um but um yeah yeah so then I got teleported basically onto the side of a mountain and uh you know so it was like winter times a thousand and then um I I like tried to go in this cave to like find shelter and then this like giant white blob of scariness chased me out of it. Um, but then luckily the others came and found me because our our, our, our our other Druid friend turned into a giant mushroom horse and then rode them um, to where I was. And then we met at what is now Mochi's Observatory, but it wasn't then. And then uh, it just turned out to be a, a really cranky uh, Druid uh, who, was, who was really upset because the bad bandits had kind of sort of murdered all of his friends. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he turned into snow at the end. Sora's gonna kind of lean into Clarence and say, I thought we weren't supposed to say um, <clears throat> anymore. Oh, you, I think it's only when you're talking about like the bad ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, he's, he's not a bandit though. In point no, Argus. no. Argus is a, is a king. Oh. Good leash. Yes. Okay. 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 Hmm. So, a mushroom horse? Yeah. He Can you turn into a mushroom horse? Druid. Huh. Never tried this before. <gasps> <gasps> try like... it. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do it. Do it. Do wait, it. Wait, do wait, 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 wait. Mochi grabs a notepad and pen and paper. If you're writing down, it's science. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. <laughs> Clarence starts oh. moving like cherries out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, perfect. So I would like to wild shape um, into a horsey. However, um, I think as Sword starts to wild shape, because he doesn't do this often, it starts to like get a little weird and warbly. Um, and basically what stands before you is a horse just made out of full sand. It's just like, Hmm. And he goes over, goes over to Clarence and goes over to Mochi. It's like solidified sand and just like some of it is just wisping off here and there. Wow, this is like when I used to make little mud figures in the old summer times. Mochi, we never got to do that together. We should. We were going to a beach. Does it have mud? Make mud. <laughs> I mean... Not out of you, and she points at Sword. We're not making mud out of you. Just general mud making, not. You know, Sword. I think the best thing about this is you're not tracking sand everywhere. And then he, when you say that, he turns back into like his actual self. He's like, so um, the thing about the tracking sand everywhere, the sand is technically a part of me, so it kind of goes. I, I can't not do that. But when you, okay, so you're so say, um, okay, so say you tracked sand in here because you're you and you uh -huh. came in here. Uh -huh. When you leave, does the sand leave with you? Mm -hmm. See, that's There's fine. A, yeah, yeah. As long as there it doesn't like stick around in my trail. tent. There might be a little trail, but you know it's fine. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> oh. Sword is going to point towards like the machinery and everything and just say, um, what's that? <gasps> I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> yeah, now you've done it. And then it's a 25 minute monologue from Mochi explaining the ins and outs of steam power. <laughs> Somewhere from within her fur, she produces a blueprint annotated 
full uh, on half, like, live show. Halfway, yeah, halfway through, her dad shows up to explain what mode she is skipping over. It's her it's mom like that. Shows, her the mom meme. shows up and goes with the runes and stuff. The meme of the guy with the board yeah. with all the stuff. Yeah, one hundred percent. I just want you to know, the second that the blueprint has come out, and while everybody is doing their um, five star. Um, presentation. Soren's eyes have glazed over. He's just like, this is far too much information, but I'm just gonna nod and wave. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. okay. We'll repeat it a few times and then it sticks in the end. That's why it's 25 minutes because they repeat stuff they already said. <laughs> exactly. You're like, oh, right. yeah. So, so going back to our first stepping point, yeah. as you'll remember, or not, as the case may be, but you will oh. in the end. So going back to point 1.5, A9, mm -hmm. uh, Junction 7, subsection 28. Yes. Okay. Your family is awesome. Well, except that guy, but and points to her. He, he does, he does kind of suck. <laughs> yeah, he's not, we, hmm, we don't want to consider him family. Um, why is he like that? I don't know. I think something went wrong when he was younger. Oh, that happened to my sister. I think they dropped her on her egg. See, see that would make sense. So he's he's not like family family. He's an ebon heart and they think they're better than the rest of us. Got it. Just and whenever like, you meet someone with the last name Ebonheart, just be a little wary. Um, he pulls out like a little notebook and says, yeah. Ebon Heart. Yeah. And like, writes like a little uh, skull and crossbones next to it. Yeah, perfect. I think presentation concluded. Uh, well, she's mainly like, she's. She's not abandoning Betty and Soren, but you know, Argus and Clarence are here, and she's about to go on another adventure, so I think she's gonna spend some time hanging with her mom and dad. Especially her mom, she doesn't get out of the avian much, so this is this is this is this is nice. It's really nice. Uh, so yeah, you're uh you you all have been talking for quite some time. Twenty five minutes have gone by. Sounds like a couple of times at least. Uh so as as Soren has like fully glazed over the eyes, like the third eyelid of the gecko has has gone across, and it's just like still looking, but not really. Um, Bochi, you make your way over to your parents, who are it seems like they're getting towards the end of the line for the the people who are coming in for food. And your mom is is wearing uh, an apron that still has the fold marks all over it. Like your dad's is like, well, I wear this every day. Your mom's like, this is stored away for when she's here. And, you know, we might need to just, like, shake it out a little bit and, and you know, maybe spray some Febreze on it. Um, Water and she... vodka. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, the ballerina way. <laughs> so uh, she is uh, she is wearing gloves. She is, like, handing out, you know, bowls. And there's a smile. And it's... You can tell that it's a little forced, but not in the sense that she, like, is unhappy with what she's doing. She just doesn't like dealing with other people. You know, she's she's a maid. That she's, one she's, that one introvert or raccoon. Yeah, she's she's you have an introvert and an extrovert for parents. One of them became an archmage where she gets to sit in an office by herself all day and it's just like that's the happiest that, that she's been in like a long time. And then here she she puts on she masks a little bit, it's all okay. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh you walk over. Oh, Mochi! Oh, I, I'm so appreciative of you explaining all of these wonderful instruments and goo gaggles and whatnots to your friends. Perhaps they might like to be a gadgeteer someday. Uh, we could always use more useful hands. Oh, hang on, Dad. Give me a second. Okay. And uh, while he's gesturing, uh, she'll cast mending on the ladle that's partly coming apart again. Mm hmm. So yeah, he's flailing with the ladle, like there's slop going yeah, everywhere. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Just, just, just hang, 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 hang on. Mending. There you go. Oh, thank you. I always forget to fix the little things. Uh, we've noticed, and um, yeah, we, we can deal. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, 
Um, yeah, no one imports in line. Uh, I'm here for the night, and um, we're we're all just gonna crash here if that's okay. Don't. Um, oh, you would, wouldn't want you anywhere else. It's just asking because of the sand horse, and I know Ma of the way Mom gets with sand. Um, but um, I mean, he's not sleeping where the sand is. It's fine. Fair enough. So uh, uh, I'm definitely not trying to stall telling you that we're leaving in the morning. And, um, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, like, leaving, leaving, like, not just going serving, leaving, but, like, uh, leaving on a, a, a big kind of maybe potentially dangerous trip leaving. And I'll send home lots and you can reply in 25 words. And, um, uh... Yeah, it's gonna be great, uh, but also if I die, make sure Camden gets none of my stuff. I... You know, I feel like I say a lot when I talk, but that was... Um, okay, I have so many questions, and your, your mom kind of steps in. Alright, let's break this down. Where are you going? The jungle. I feel like I shouldn't be too specific because That's... Asher was all like, shh, be quiet, be secret. So, jung let's jungle. How long will you be gone? Don't know. Who are you going with? Betty, Argus, Clarence, and Soren. And you just take a deep breath. T take a deep breath. Me and Dad are going... <laughs> Why do you have concerns about your the safety of your life? Uh, because we're putting like three dangerous quests into one trip. And I have to go on a boat. And I learned how to surf, but I'm going to be wearing armor. And that means I sink. <laughs> Rutherford, I swear by the amaranthines, breathe through your nose and out through your mouth. He's just like he's he's put his goggles on like something's about to explode and he's just I she's going uh, so far away jungles where are their jungles I need a map do I own a map ah oh oh you said you're gonna die don't die I can't I I, I just I you're, you're like you're the only mochi I got and I can't replace you I can fix other things I can't fix a broken mochi just just abs just just I know beside himself yeah yeah. Figure. And your your mom is just like this 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 pillar of of calm. Oh. I honestly don't think she would have told her dad if her mom hadn't been there to mm -hmm. like center him. Uh. Mochi, you have yes. always been the one child to get into more than your share. And I say that as the utmost compliment. Thank you. You? I cannot guarantee that you will be fine. I am going to worry about you every second of every day. You should probably do that anyway. Like, just it's, realistically. It's, I have scheduled it. My calendar is booked. Yeah. And it's because of you. I am glad that you are going with people that you trust. I'm glad that you will not be alone. And I think you are going to do great things. You are never you have never been one for a plan. No. And so I will not try to plan anything for you. Go forth into the chaos, my sweet, sweet girl. And show it what's what. Fully planned to. Just thought I should give Dad the heads up because last time he found out that we were doing terrible things while we were doing terrible things, and that didn't go well. Right. But this also didn't go well, so maybe. Do I just tell him after next time? Because during and before are not. We're working with the therapist on coping in real time. 
just okay. Okay. Let's 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 just be gentle. He has oh. he has a lot on his shoulders these days too. He's he's you know he's the master of innovation on the council now, and he's trying to put his machines everywhere. So, just be gentle with his mental state. Rutherford, you can take your goggles off now. She's not going to explode. Oh, uh, the observatory is staying my shipping address, so if you want to, like... <laughs> she, to she, like, it's like half turn away from mom. If there's anything you need to ship away from people, you can leave the observatory stay. Rutherford, anything that goes boom, or smokes, or hisses, or springs out, sharp edges, send it to the observatory. Yes. Stop sending it to the avium. Yeah, that's kind of where we're going with... Yeah. Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I think that mainly covers it. Um, also, retroactively, because I don't feel like I've verbalized this enough, and I've been spending time with Clarence and, and Betty, and they're like, oh, I have to tell people in your life that you care about this, so I love you both. And um, uh, thank you again for the really cool tent, because that saved my life like four times last adventure. Um, that was great. Thank you. The least that we could do. I'm going to scrounge through my uh, traveler's chest and see if there's perhaps anything else that I can send you along with. Anything that perhaps would make you more buoyant, but we'll see. We bright streams have never been much for the open ocean, but again. Like I said, the that... serving is fine, but I don't serve in my armor. Right. It's the well, armor that drags me down. See if we have any inflatables. Yes, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go. Be safe no. as you can. Thank you. Keep us updated as best you can. Definitely. You gonna hug her mom? Starch apron notwithstanding. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she's gonna both hug her dad and do the the. Oh, there, 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 dad. It, we're gonna be good. Just, it's gonna. Be, okay, okay. There. Shh. Dad. Shh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, your mom, like, she puts, you know, her her little bopak paw, like, in the back of your, the fur of your head, and gives you just a little scratch. It's, it's, it's a tight hug, but it's just like, you know, just a little kiss in the forehead, and then a best of luck. Your dad's just like gripping onto you, like he's gonna, fly, like, he's gonna fly off the mm -hmm. floor if he lets go. It's just, it's so tight, and there's a little bit of shaking. Yeah, we're gonna. It's gonna be cool, okay? Just um, remember what the therapist said. I don't know what your therapist said, but you know what your therapist said. So remember what your therapist said. And you got it, <sighs> Dad. You gotta go. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, everything's gonna be fine, Mochi. You're, you're gonna be great. Um, and you know, me and your mom, we're gonna, we're gonna think about you every single day, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're going to. Oh God, I'm gonna worry so much. Oh, no, what, what happens to you? No, oh, no, you, no, I can't no, do this right now. Gonna, Except gonna... the things you cannot change. Um, what's, how's the rest of that go? I forgot. Uh, 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 have the strength to accept the things you cannot change and, and, and change the things you can or something. I don't know, I need to go to therapy. You're right, I need to fix things. And he, like, puts down the pot and just, like, picks up just this massive, like, you know, ratchet and clank, like, sized wrench and just goes running off to... Just work on something that probably doesn't need to get done. I will make sure that all of your beds are properly made for the night. Thank you. Oh, oh, hang on. Soren! Do you sleep yeah. in a bed, or do you need, like, a hammock? Or... Oh! Ooh. I like hammocks. I like hammocks a lot. Can we give him one of the hammocks? We can do it. That's fine. Thank you. Alright, great. Perfect. Uh, I am... Ooh, I'm gonna go pack. 
Oh, man. Okay, so get rid of the bikinis. What do we wear in a jungle? You can keep one of the bikinis. There is water. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, Mochi will uh, potter off. Uh, let everyone know. Beds are being made. Storm's got a hammock. Clarence, you know where your bed is. You live here. Um, and it's gonna, I gotta go get oh, the pack. Well, I'll be well. All right. Um, is there anything anybody else wanted to do this evening? Okay. Then uh, night comes to the Humblewood, and uh, all of you spend the night uh, with, with, you know, the, the the bright streams in this this very warm but still like comforting. You know, probably a lot of you like uh, Soren probably doesn't even need a blanket. Like this is it probably feels a lot like. The jungle that you came from uh maybe a little warm for some of the rest of you but uh yeah the the night concludes the morning comes and uh you all are uh are awakened early enough as as mochi's dad has has prepared food for all of you and you see that the, the line has has you know started up once again as mochi's dad has brought out the cauldron it's a different type of slop it's more like a porridge or, or even like a biscuits and gravy kind of situation. Um, your, your, your taste buds can't necessarily like differentiate. Like it's a little bit of both. Um, anything you all want to do uh, in the morning? Any shopping or anything that you all wanted to do um, before we got to uh, the, uh, the information for your adventure? Okay. You guys have money? I have some money have money like what like, say, you what, all should have money from the adventure unless yeah. you, you think you would have spent it all uh no. in, in the interim I, I think mochi just yes she needs to shop but she doesn't know what to buy so she asks store and like i have I, my entire life has been like up until the last few months has been winter so i have like so many cloaks and boots and things what do you wear in the jungle um and he like looks at his clothes and like he has a like one parka, like one wool parka and like his pants and like just like a shirt and like huh? like no shoes. <laughs> so it's like I mean I, I, I guess Honestly Mochi's perfectly down with no shoes. I don't think she's worn shoes a day in her life. <laughs> Good job. He's like, well, um honestly, I just something to keep you cool um i know armor is a thing that people have to have because you know it helps uh -huh. you be strong but um i don't think uh heavy uh, coats are going to be necessary or anything like that so if you've got um a place that you know that sells like very light stuff that's good oh the nights are very cold though the, the nights are very cold, so we needed these long good blankets. Oh, no, uh, that's fine. Oh, um, oh, yeah, you have fur. No, no, I also have this! And um, she holds up uh, this rod with, like, a tiny fire thingy on the top of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it becomes a tent. Oh! With a uh, fire inside. Well, if you have that, I don't think we need anything else, then. That covers half the battle. I think Mochi would, like, go for some sort of cotton or linen undershirt to go under the freaking scale mail. Just against the chafing. Yeah. Yeah, I think common clothes are, are part of your yeah. uh, your outfit just for the, the sake of that, for sure. Yeah, yeah perfect. Um, in that case, uh, not that I don't uh, trust my uh, fellow party members, just one or two healing potions. <clears throat> For sure. Yeah. Clarence would uh you know what? Yeah. Betty. So boats. boats. What does one need on a boat? Uh I mean that's a great question. Um I mean, I 
have everything I need. And she again gestures to her bag. Um, and like, you can see like nets kind of like spilling out of the top of it. It's, it, it's a whole mess. This bag is like overflowing with things, but there's like, this is, you can see nets and whatnot. Um, and she kind of like gestures to what she's wearing, which is like a vest with some mismatched buttons on it and like a pair of like knee length pants they're not they're not shorts we're not talking like booty shorts or anything over here they're just like short pants um she's like well i mean you don't want anything that you're gonna trip over so you know like no i wouldn't i wouldn't wear any skirts or, or long pants or anything that's like too loose you don't want to trip and fall overboard that's very bad um we probably don't need any shoes. I think everybody's going to be fine. Um, a good boat will have flotation devices for the number of people plus some extras. So, I mean, we shouldn't need to worry about our own personal flotation devices. And she kind of looks around thinking like, I don't need a flotation device, but I don't know if these other yahoos can swim. So, like, I don't, I don't know. Um... <laughs> And then she kind of thinks about that for a second, and then she goes, "Can you swim?" I can swim. Yeah, okay. I'm. I'm. I'm 25. I. I know. I know summers. Okay. Okay. Good. Great. Okay. Mochi can definitely swim. That's good. Can Argus swim? They kind of look at each other like, "Oh no!" I can mean, Argus I'll, swim? I mean. <laughs> Technically, yes. Owls can swim. I'm not sure oh. if Argus can, but we'll see. All right, all right. Good to know. I didn't actually know owls can swim, so yeah. learning something new. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, then I think, like, all things considered, I think we're probably, I mean, there will be, again, presuming it's a good boat, they should have food and things on board. I wouldn't. They should have lifeboats, depending on the size of the boat, maybe. Okay. Huh. I, I'd know, say I'd say bring some, I don't know, like a hat maybe to keep the sun off your cute little ooh, pink nose. A hat. Oh. Gotta get a big okay. sun hat for Clarence. <laughs> Betty, Betty, we should go down to the root market. Are we going to get a hat? Yeah, but they also might sell us some other cool stuff. Okay. Sure. Betty and I are going to the root market. Anybody <laughs> else coming? Helping? I, I have all I need, so you guys have fun with Whoa. your search. If you find a hat for me, sure, get me one. Oh. More hats. Okay, all right. Soren, <laughs> are you coming? Are um, you staying here? I don't have any money. But... Don't worry about it. We'll sort it out. Okay. I'll come. That, not to say that we'll buy you anything you want, but we can, we can give you a few things. Yeah. Mochi? At least, yeah. We taking the shortcut? Yeah, we're taking the shortcut. Okay, let's go take the shortcut. We, we go over. We go over uh, to uh, a, a corridor outside of the Brightstream home yeah. that has uh, what I'm imagining uh, looks like what one would consider like a trash chute. Um, yeah. but we all know that the bright streams use this as like a transportation trash slide. Shoot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> taking out the trash just means that, you know, you're taking the, the guests. Out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I love this. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, as <laughs> Mochi, Clarence, and Soren go to literally dive into the criminal underworld of the, the Alder Heart uh, in Betty. search of hats. For Rain um, Betty. And, and Betty. Betty. I'm sorry, yes, and Betty. Um, that, I think, is a great place to take our break. So, uh, stick around, folks. We'll be back in about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to need to pull up so many sheets for this. So, uh, <laughs> stick around. Uh, again, this game is in support of uh, Fallout and Floor International. So, uh, in the meantime, in the interim, even in between games, you can donate to this wonderful cause and impact whatever the next game is. So, if you donate in the break... Great. You get to give a crit advantage, a complication, any of that stuff. So, so it goes for its great cause and impacts a fun game like this. Uh, again, we'll see you in about 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes. Take care of yourselves.
need to check if Kayla's still here. Covered under a guinea pig and a dog and can't move. The pets have taken over. Oh no. <laughs> No, no. It's just, it's this just like the, the humble wood. wood. Yeah. <laughs> Lesson learned. Hello, everybody. Welcome okay. back. Welcome back to Humblewood, the un, no, not the unwelcome winter. Not anymore. This is Humblewood. Not Young anymore. Uh, this is Humblewood season two. I'm Derek Swift. <gasps> Thank you for joining us. Uh, again, just... the captions cut in on the words "heavy petting" coming out of Perfect. Derek's that's mouth. That's what I wanted it to do. <laughs> yes. Um, we're, we were mostly exactly. talking about during break how like everybody's shedding their winter coats and there's a lot of like just petting each other is a very communal thing to do in Humblewood. Um, that a lot of molting. There's just the like the street sweepers are so busy come springtime. Um, but yes, uh, one last time, this is, well, not for the last time, but just one more time. This game is in support of, uh, Fauna Employer International, wonderful organization that works to, uh, preserve, protect the world's ecosystems and the animals that live within. So, uh, you can donate to that wonderful cause at any time. The Tiltify link that you can see in chat as well as on all of our socials. And, uh, should you do that, uh, you get to impact this game as well. You can give crits, advantages, complications, and more. We're going to edit that. Uh, soon here to add some more options to it as well so keep that in mind uh jumping back into stuff mochi betty clarence and soren have uh taken a dive down the trash chute uh which has launched them from the upper branches of the alder heart uh just like soren this has to be like a nightmare i imagine uh you're in a completely dark hollow so you can hear the echoes of your new friends all cheering or screaming or a combination of both as as you dive down this this petrified hollow tube um just it seems to have no end like you're you're going down almost a hundred stories oh. like that's that that's almost the equivalent of of where we were and it's the point where you begin to realize maybe from the cold or the smell of it you're underground at a certain point and then that point just ends and you find yourself just boom, onto this this soft pile of blankets and pillows and leaves and just everything else that seems to have been set here long ago by Mochi and Clarence. And and standing around you are your, your furrier friends uh, who all seem to have landed as well. And as you look around and you kind of like take in the, the smell it's darker here. You're not getting in natural light. All the light here comes from lanterns that are hung above that seem to have either glowing insects inside of them uh, or some sort of like low level magic that's been cast on them. So they, they cast light. So in that sense, there's blues, there's yellows, there's greens. There's kind of this strange, like uh, prismatic hue that's, that's being cast throughout uh, the, the root system of the alder heart. And you can smell kind of like that mulchy, rot and kind of like the the dampness because this is where all the moisture is as well and you would look around to see almost a mirror image of of the shopping area where you were before uh but whereas there were you know set shops where the the wood had been the wood of the alder heart had been formed into businesses with doors everything here is kind of ramshackle there's people moving around with wagons where they're just piled with mismatched goods there's vendors who have set up tents that are hawking you know very clearly used weapons and and there's a lot of wink winking going on you know you see somebody flip up an eye patch and go ah eh, wink wink you know like you're, you're getting the the vibe of illicitness down here uh nevertheless it, it seems to be uh, busy as there are all different types of folk moving about um how would you all like to proceed So as we have gone through all of this, all my new friends have heard was just Soren bloody murder screaming. <laughs> like, ah! And then like as we pop out, it's just like Can we do it again? Uh, uh, you know, that's I was a little worried about you there. <laughs> um I'm I'm used to um slides like this. But they're normally not dark. It was the darkness that got me. Oh. Yeah. Next oh, time we no. can light it up, honestly. Um, that would be nice. Um, what, is, what is this place? Shopping center? Yeah. Shopping center. Welcome. I like it here. Literally oh, anything uh, you ever wanted is probably here. 
just mm -hmm. um i know you don't have any money um but also betty just like um anything that can like buckle down sort of buckle it down and if you have things that can be tucked away maybe tuck them away betty reaches over and like starts scooping the nets falling out of her bag like back inside shoving them down <laughs> yeah just really yeah really buckle things in are there. people gonna try and steal from me Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Silence, it speaks volumes. <laughs> okay. I, I, I know what I'm dealing with here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Ties off his little, uh, the only thing he really cares about is like his, uh, they, he has one thing to his side, his slingshot and his uh, staff. So he's like, they can try it if they want to. It's fine. <laughs> Oh, also, uh, don't get in a fight, uh, unless Argus is also here, because he'll get jealous if he's not here, um, when we start fighting, so. It's like oh, a group, yeah. group thing, it's a, yeah. Okay. Last time you were here, he definitely hit somebody with a chair. Well, he needs yeah. to come, he should have came then. He also um, wants to come for the fighting, not the shopping. Well, then we have to make this, um a great experience for all of us to make him miss that he didn't come. Yeah. Or if we do start a fight, wait at least like, like give give him a half minute, I'll send him, then he needs to come down here and then just stall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Betty kind of thinks back to the, the shoot that we all just fell down. Can he fit? Uh... Is it big enough? Uh... It's... Wait, um... Uh, um... Did we take this last time? Did we take the shortcut the last time? I don't think, think we did. Argus <laughs> took the shortcut last time. No. <laughs> he can glide! Can yeah, he can just, like, can just like, like, glide down. It's fine. He's got wings. He's a big boy. I'm so sorry. This is fucking me up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wings, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wings. Yeah. He's got two of those. I, I think he... I th he I've never been here before, but I think he'll be able to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. He's a king. Exactly. Uh, okay, all right, all right, let's go this way. This way, this shop okay. has everything. Okay. Eric, I'm, I'm going to this great shop. I can name it, you can name it, whichever, it's fine. It's just run by the hedge, though. Um, sure. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm envisioning this shop is like, the end all be all of trinket and thrift shops. Ooh, is it ran by Greg? Is, shady. <laughs> is it Greg? Is it Greg? <laughs> is it Greg? <laughs> is it Greg? It's, it's not Greg. It is it is Greg's cousin. It's Greg's it's cousin okay. Axel. Yeah. Uh so you go into like it is actually burrowed out, whereas a lot of the stands are like, I'll oh, break it down really quick just in case the fuzz shows up. Which actually the fuzz in this kind of in this game kind of has a different connotation to it, right? Uh, but this is actually like a, a burrowed out kind of like the walls are lined with just it's like a TGI Fridays <laughs> like there's there's a, a trombone without a slide there's snowshoes there's just there's there's just detritus everywhere there's boxes stacked on top of boxes that just have like it they just say fruit but it's spelled F R O O T on the outside like everything's just so mismatched in here. And you see, like, a, a kind of dangling little sign off a couple of chains that says, Axles, Anythings, and Everythings. And uh, you go in to see this this hedge uh, standing behind a counter, kind of like a half counter. And, you know, porcupine-looking fellow with these, uh, these pince nez and a little vest. And he just comes waddling up. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Axles, Anything, and Everythings. Can I interest you in one or the other? Former, latter, anything, everything? Hmm? Everything's on sale if you pay the price for it. Uh, okay, Axel. Um, 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 we're looking for everything that you need to go on a boat adventure. And the, and the jungle adventure, one after yes. the other. Yeah, have you been to the Tango Wilds? Wilds? No, I've been planning a vacation for years, but it's so hard to step away these days. You know how it is. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so boat adventure. You're going to need, uh, let's see, what do I know about boats? Um, wood, rope, nails, 
Canvas for sales, I think. Are you building the boat, buying the boat, renting the boat? What are we doing? <clears throat> renting. Do you need boat insurance? Renting. Oh, no. Yeah, we are. We're renting. Okay, well, you might you might need some sailing insurance if I can interest you in that. You know, you don't want to... Just in case you happen to lose your boat. Oh, no, we got it. Like, she'll just... As soon as he says uh, boating insurance, she just says Betty. The boating thing's covered and just gestures at, like, Betty as a whole. Like, as oh. he says insurance, she leans down to sword and she goes, he really does have everything here. Very and then, like, stands up really quick and, like, looks around when Mochi gestures to her. Mm -hmm. You notice the sword. Oh, I see you went with Geico. I understand. Excuse All right. Excuse me. So <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I heard, you know, we use progressive where I'm from. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh. See, I, I, my, my cousin Greg's a farmer, so I use, <gasps> I use farmers. Yeah. Wait. Greg, Greg, the Greg with Buttercup. Oh, you've met Greg. Hey, yeah, he's my he's, best friend. Oh, Abba Wood's so small. Oh, that's great. Oh, uh, you could have a friends and families discount. It's ten percent more. Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, you're renting a boat. So it sounds like you will need. Uh, are you are you being fed on this boat? Will you need rations? Uh, uh, hopefully. Betty, what do you eat on a boat? Not bananas. Not bananas. Mm -hmm. Not bananas. Right. Uh, you know, they're irradiated, of course, and, and they they give off a type of uh, uh, rotting kind of uh, aura to them. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I have one bad banana? You, you can have, yeah, you can have one bad banana, sure. But you can't bring it on the boat. Why not? It's bad luck. One oh. bad banana spoils the boat. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. Hats, so, scarves, glasses, umbrellas. Oh, like... sunglasses is honestly a very good idea. Oh, All of the yeah. sunlight on the water. Mm. I love the way you think, Mochi. Yeah. So, Just... Do you have mm. sunglasses and hats? Oh, we have so many hats. Uh, a few sun sunglasses. Yeah, 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 sure. Why not? Do we have uh, anything more like goggle uh, form? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I it's have just because gold. ears are unpredictable in this world. Mm hmm. I think Mochi's gonna shop for hats, but she's probably gonna, like, when Betty mentions the sun and the water, she's just gonna grab some, like, welding goggles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> hats. So that's, uh, Focus on the hats. Yes, we have uh, top hats, wide-brimmed hats, uh, mm -hmm. we've got goofy hats, we've got uh, Mickey hats. No, that's a bad joke. Uh, we have... <laughs> um, that's a bad joke. That's where you draw the line. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to get sued by Disney, okay? I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, um, uh, what about, what, okay, wide brim hats. Like, what are your, like, widest brim hats? Uh, I mean, we've got, like, some pretty wide brimmed hats, depending on, I mean, how wide you want it. <laughs> like, we've got, like, gardener's hats, we've got, like, you know, cowboy hats, and then we've got, like, the like uh, that's an umbrella, you know. Did you ever watch? Did you ever watch Riyadama? Whatever Fern was wearing as a hat, that's roughly what we're thinking. Right, like like something you can flip over and carry an entire like bushel of apples. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's not bad. Multi-purpose. Yeah, yeah, the multi-purpose hat section, of course. Um, you know, these are your bucket hats. These are your bowl hats, and uh, and these are your holy shit. Is that a hat? That's so. Um, and they're gold apiece. I mean, it's it's take take your pick. One, two, three, four, Argus, five. So we need five of them. Five hats. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> you got five hats. You got one pair of goggles. Betty Betty slides up the counter and puts her elbow on there and. Um... I also need a bottle of wine. Okay. Uh, white, red, rosé, vintage. I, I mean, I mean, what, whatever, whatever you've got. If you've got something that's like almost vinegar, honestly, that would probably be, be good. 
Yeah, I mean, most of what I have is almost vinegar. If you look around here, Fantastic. yeah. Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. I think a red. A red would be good. Oh, yeah. No, he, like, puts, puts up a bottle of port. Feels Perfect. fitting. Yeah. Per yeah. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, you all want any armor or weapons or uh, I'm neat good. capes? Instruments? No capes. No capes on boat. Uh, yeah, you, no case, you trip no on that, skirts. you fall over. Yeah. It's, it's all it's all bad. <laughs> um, uh, hey, you hey, need hey, like Axel? climbing equipment or? Uh, yeah, Mochi's just gonna refill. Mochi's like four kits, so she's just gonna refill, like restock. Uh, actually, her alchemist kit probably stole from her dad, uh, borrowed from her dad. Um, but yeah, her other stuff, she's just gonna. Also for scrounge craft, I picture Mochi grabbing the hat she's buying, flipping it upside down, and just grabbing random shit that she can turn into other random shit later, mm -hmm. and just putting it on the counter. Just the usual. Yeah. Do you have any non-cursed, like, necklaces or something? The, okay, the qualifier feels a little insulting. Yes, all of, all okay, of my look, items have been... Okay, look, I know that people sell cursed objects all the time, hoping that it gets rid of the curse, but that's not how curses work. Wow. Okay, listen, deep, deep breath for me. Axel, purveyor of fine goods. Oh. Oh. No, you're right, I absolutely do sell cursed shit all the time. Exactly, that's what I said, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, you're looking for it to do something? No, I just, I mean, I mean, I guess it could do something, but I, I was just kind of looking for something that's a little nice to give uh, a good friend. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Let me, uh, we, we, I mean, we got some mundane stuff. We got this, this nice little locket. There's, uh, don't mind the pictures in there. There's people are most assuredly dead. Um... Uh, let's see. We've got this uh, this nice little moonstone and and brass. Uh, we've got this gold, this, this nice gold chain. He kind of like pulls out his own gold chain. Very simple, very elegant. De very classy. Denotes, yeah, very classy indeed. Uh, and then you know we've got some more magical stuff as well. So uh, let's. Um. Uh, um. Pull up some of those. Boy, how they thought there would be more than that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I wish there was a necklace option. Like, I typed in necklace, give me three things, and one of them is necklace of fireball. Because <laughs> some of them no. are amulets. Necklace of fireball. No. What do you mean? I'm sorry. Why not? On the ship. Wait, you uh, take out one of the little stones and throw it and it becomes a fireball? Who doesn't want that? <laughs> I, I do have this very nice amulet of health. Uh, if you are looking to uh, to boost, I mean that's that shows uh, affection for someone. Uh, hey, I don't want you to die. It's very nice. That's fair. Uh, let's see. I've got. Hey, uh, let's see. I'm looking for the one that boosts your AC, but I think that it might be a brooch. Yeah. Also, uh, is it two magic items you can have attuned? Yeah, you can three. attune to three. Unless oh, you're something shield, like an artificer. Oh, I don't have to attune to the shield. Nice. Uh, I also have uh, this nice little brooch that uh, protects you from stuff. It's the brooch of shielding. Okay. How 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 much is this amulet of help? Uh, that I uh, could probably let that go for mm, a thousand. A thousand. It's very magical. Oh, like a thousand copper? I could definitely do a thousand copper. <laughs> ah, you're funny. You're funny. Uh, no, uh, he points at the sign. No joking about pricing. Let's hang behind him. Oh. Uh, no, no. In fact, uh, a thousand gold, and I think that even that is a is is a deal. This is a, a uh, classified as uh, rare. It's a rare magic item. So. What if I play you a thousand gold button song? I can help. <laughs> um, you know what? You play me a good enough song, maybe we'll see if we can negotiate a price. How about that? Okay. Got it. 
<laughs> okay. okay. Uh, give me a performance check, Joe. Starts doing like little pitter patters off to the side. <laughs> little pitter patter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hey, over babe. here dropping sick beats. Him, him, him. That's me getting my dice out. Um. <laughs> Okay, um... Did you roll it with advantage, though? With advantage for... Because I, I do have I, my inspiration. I, I quite literally am helping. You do so. have your inspiration. And inspiration. Oh, and yeah. I'm gonna get... Well, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will give you... I'll give you a plus two to whatever it is for... Um, for Soren's... Uh, All right, so that's gonna be a total of twenty-two on my performance. He acts all too. And I'm performing the grand song about the great migration of the Lupu and how they came to be in the humble wood and settle in the lowlands and their battles with the Scorch Grove. And as like a crescendos, I'm gonna go like do like a small produce flame that's gonna and like little sparkles. Very nice. Okay. Love a little uh, pomp and circumstance. We love <laughs> Yeah. You know what? That's jazz fingers. Wait, no jazz. Really no nice. thumbs. Like... Only jazz hands. <laughs> te- wipes away a tear. It's actually really nice. That's I. I mean, I never knew in history of your people. It's it's very nice to see that come through. Glad you enjoyed the song of my people. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm willing to negotiate. That was that was a good song. Um What uh what do you what are you thinking? What do you what do you what, what are you thinking for this? Um I have a total of ten gold. <laughs> uh, I was thinking like eight hundred and Um, <laughs> I got a rock. Is it a nice rock? Like, I want to work with you here. Like, <laughs> is it you, a rock you... or is it a giant diamond? I mean, <laughs> both oh, technically so rocks. It could be either. It both yeah, yeah. Either. That was Wallace <laughs> Sapphire. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> but no, he straight up pulls out a plain old rock. He's like. Oh. Um, this is Jasper. Um, they're really nice. They're amazing. Um, they make great company. Uh, you all kind of. They won't try to steal from you. You you see Betty? You kind of like rummage around (laughs) and like like at her belly area, and she lifts up her vest, and you guys, it looks like she reaches into her body, which is like kind of weird. And then pulls out a rock. And it just looks like a regular rock. But she puts it on the counter. This is my favorite rock. Okay. I'm just saying. It's it's my favorite. And... Yeah, how can you put a price on your favorite rock, right? Is this is priceless. It's like a little bit sparkly. It's not really anything fancy, but it does have like just a nice little sparkle to it if you hold it up to the right light. I mean, I give you maybe a silver for this at best. I'm sorry, like uh, people tend to value personal things, right? But in like a marketplace, like I, I hate to, I, I, I hate to, 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 to pawn stars with this. But uh, I appreciate that this means something to you. But you know, let's let me let me call in my guy. Let me call in my rock guy. Uh, no, he's he, yeah. I, is this rock special to anyone else? It could be. It's um, really special to uh, me, and by extension, my deity. It's like a religious artifact. Uh, Clarence, you hear a voice in your head. He's distracted. Just take it. 
cause a little scene, just take it, make it seem like you just knocked everything off the counter. We'll have to pick uh -huh. everything up one by one, and the victim's just yeah, all missing somewhere. He's just, he's a business owner. He's just trying to, like, make... He's, he's a con man. He's selling things well more than what they're worth. Yeah, but you're also a con man. You just trade in magic. Uh, my con stands for confidence, Clarice, which I'm trying to impart to you. Have the confidence to take and what is yours. My con stands for compassion. And you're getting this necklace for someone else. Yes, this amulet is going to show your compassion to someone else. Um. Uh. The world's not been fair to you, Clarence. It's left you with ten gold when you are a hero of the humble wood. That's true. There's like this moment, He's Clarence's paws like hover over the counter worth of stuff. Okay, how much was the regular locket? Uh, the, the, I mean, just the, the lockets, I could let that go for a gold. Okay, here's, here's 10 gold for everything. All right, yeah, we can call that fair. Everyone gets to keep their rocks. Oh, um, I have one, one question, though. Um, Mr. Axel, sir? Yes. Um, do you have... Anything that says, um, I've been to the Humblewood. I just, um, like a, a gift of sorts, uh, might say I love the Humblewood. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, give me a second. And he, he turns around and, uh, like, like snaps off a, a piece of, like, the, the root bark and just, you see him, like, <laughs> oh, Axel, Axel. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, yes. No, no, Can I no. Help you he, I, no, it's for him. He on the back. He, 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 he talked to the to the Alder Heart. So make it I heart the Alder Heart. Mm, I get it because yeah, it's okay. hearts. I get it. I, 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 I need a little heart, like a butt with a point. Okay. Yeah. And... I heart the Alder Heart. All right, five gold. Yes. Yeah. Huh? He slaps down just like something he is very clearly, like blows off the, the dust from it, puts it down. I got you. I'll pay it. Don't worry about it. Are you sure? This, this, yeah. is, this is amazing. This is a star. It's a like handmade souvenir, Soren. It's perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Moji. Um, he puts it in his bag. Oh, he's just like. Oh, don't cry! You'll run out of sand. Right, sand. Oh, it's the new, it's the new sorting key T-shirt. <laughs> by the way, it's just like it's got the sorting key logo on the front and on the yeah. back. It says "I heart the elder heart." Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, love that. Thank you, uh, Mochi. Okay. I thank okay. you for so much for shopping. It actually say hi to my cousin Greg. They're around here somewhere. With buttercup. I'm sorry, the store is closed. You didn't say that. <laughs> oh. Store's, store's closed. In, can I get an inside check on that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. 13. Uh, there's there's some pressure as you see him, like, going for his lockbox. You kind of, like, are putting two to two together that, like, he probably owes Greg money. Hey! Oh, um, just, like, pulls down the shutters on stuff. Yeah. He, has, he has his own little hole that he just, like, dives into. <laughs> Here, a bunch of locks and keys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to just, like, I'm going to leave Jasper, like, at the front of this and just uh, <laughs> just make a note. Or if I see Greg, be like, find Jasper, find your no good beatnik cousin. Are you leaving, Jasper? I think you need Jasper. Oh, I have lots of rocks. <laughs> okay. Jasper's. Uh, okay, I guess we should go meet up with Argus and Asher. Alright. So, uh, let's see here. 
Uh, yes, you all would uh, finish up your, your business here, find one of the nearby lifts, and uh, it would take you upwards, 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 uh, as far as it could go, uh, traversing the rest of the way by stairs. It's, you know, it's still early morning. It's still before noon when all this has happened. So uh, you all, you know, find your way up to uh, the the council chambers of the Alder Heart. And it seems as if the, the council is not meeting today or perhaps is in recess as uh, you would find uh, Argus there with, with Ash already. Argus, is there anything else you wanted to do in the meantime before that? Uh, no, I think I think just talking with Asher about the the snakes in his garden. Absolutely, uh, uh, was the most important thing. So, uh, so with with that, yes, you find yourselves uh, all in the council chambers, and uh, Asher uh, again stands at that center. This way, this time with much more of that that radiant light uh, streaming down from the early morning, uh, and uh, he he looks to all of you. I hope that you all have done whatever shopping or preparation. Um, let's check here. One more thing. This one, sorry. Is there anything else that you all need to do before I send you on your way? Hear what we're doing? Yeah, if you didn't give us the details. Yeah. So as you all remember, the the main reason, aside from some council members choosing to take ultimate control uh, for the winter that we all suffered through, was the the Borealis, a gem of immense cold winterous power, uh, a, a gem that's believed to have been sent to us by one of the Amperanthine themselves. What I am asking for you all to do is to travel with this item, take it far, far to the south, to a place where the, the greatest scholars of the Avium have determined it originates from. It is apparently one of a set. There is a temple, a long lost temple far within the jungles of the Tangled Wild. Find your way to this temple, realign it with its set, and once again balance can be restored. We fear that the, the imbalance that Soren has been experiencing is a result of this gem being used against its true nature. Its true nature being to bring the balance to the world. The imbalance it caused has caused imbalance in other places. Take this item, journey to where we're not sure anyone has been for over a thousand years, and bring this gem back to where it belongs. Do so safely, return back, and you will have saved not only your home, but everyone's. So you don't know where we're going? We just need to go where somebody like others don't go? The scholars of the Avium have determined their best triangulation of where this temple is believed to be. But it is far in the Tangled Wilds where we are uncertain of any civilization there. Even the, the Alurans, even their, their Luzon Empire, while it encompasses this portion as its territory, it is not one of their... It is not near any of their civilizations. That's why we're bringing Soren, right? He, he knows stuff about the place. As far as we're aware, his people live the closest to this temple and may even have members who have been there but don't necessarily know what they necessarily encountered. So, um, we know an idea of where it is, um, but it's... You know how you guys were dealing with like a very, 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 very bad winter? Um, imagine the exact opposite of that. Um, it's not... It's not an easy place to get to nowadays. So it's gonna be a lot of um, fires to say the. Yeah. Okay. We used to have a friend that was really good with fire. Um, 
Is Calgary. it just us here right now, Derek? Yes. As far as you can tell, all the doors are closed. Uh, there does not seem to be anybody else about. Hmm. Mochi, you don't need to raise your hand. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh... But I need to be quiet because people are being sneaky again. So this is our, like, big mission that Asher brought us here for. And then she'll half turn. Uh, so Argus, what's going on with you? Why were you being all I need a private moment with Asher yesterday? Because if if uh, why are we not like bringing a band of mercenary? I have been challenged by the King of the Pirates hmm. to meet with them. And they used Jasmine to call me there. Call yes. you where? Soren, yes. Um, and, and Betty. Who's Jasmine? They are the reason I am king. I'll tell you more later. They're super cool. Yes, Mochi. Where is there? Where did they where did they call you? Where exactly did they call me there? I can't remember. <laughs> uh they have told you that they are going to give you a, a letter at the next port. So you presume that once you get to Salter's port they will have a note waiting for you there. They taunt me. Direct me to head to Salter's port. There, I will get my next message about the whereabouts of their kingdom, I suppose. And as as he's talking, he is fiddling with the, the, the bracelet that is showing the direction of, um, yeah. of where they need to go. Mochi went from super excited because she mentions King of the Pirates to absolutely outraged because they're messing with Jasmine to uh, kind of just an excitement because, oh my god, Argus is going to wreck their shit and we get to help. I mean, it's awful, but I can't wait to see what you do. That is why this mission we've been given won't have my undivided attention until then. So we're stopping by the Pirate King on the way to the Tangle Wilds? That's my plan. I don't know what you all are planning. That means Jasmine's gonna come with us to the Tangle Wilds after we pick her up from the Pirate Kingdom and lead their kingdom in a sea of flames? Perhaps. Cool. So excited, you guys. That last part's up to Jasmine. Oh, fair. Cool. I think, like, as Argus is talking, Betty is watching him, watching Mochi, watching everybody's face, kind of trying to put things together, and looks over at Asher and says, It's kind of convenient that they're directing him to go to Salter's port when we were already headed there. Argus has brought this up to me that there's likely. Someone either near me or someone in between our communiques who seems to be working for the pirates. I'm doing my best to uproot this weed, to use the metaphor Argus and I had spoken about before, uh, but I would advise you all to keep an eye out. This mission is no longer totally a secret, and you will likely face many threats. This is this is a big ask that I am placing on all of you. I'm, I hope not to shy away from that. But when it comes to these sorts of requests, you are those that I trust and have made yourselves worthy of that trust. Um, as an aside, uh, talking about like game mechanics, mm -hmm. if 
someone, if there was an additional someone in this room who we could not see, um, would they cast a shadow? Like, is that a thing? If they're, like, invisible or using a cloak or something like that, would they cast a shadow? I don't think so. Okay. All right. You don't, but that you can hear and potentially smell them. Yes. Yeah, I guess... look up, because Mochi has invisibility from four different sources. Oh my Jesus. Um... <laughs> um... Yeah, I think when Asher says that, basically, there's a mole. Haha. -ha, um, Thank you! You're At welcome. Last. And, um, I think as he says that, Betty just kind of, like, looks around the room, like, really intently, looking for, like, any sort of alcove that seems a little bit too dark or too deep or, like, uh, like, rafters where there's a lot of shadow or anything like that where somebody could potentially be hiding. Um... She's not like doing like a full on investigation, but I think she's like staring off into the dark, trying to see um, if she sees anything there. Yeah, give me a perception check. <laughs> oh, uh, Are you making this obvious? Yeah, yeah, she's definitely not trying to hide what she's doing. They're talking about it openly, so there's no reason for her to hide that she's looking. Um, and that's a 23. Um, yeah, uh, what I'll say is, uh, looking off into, you know, the, the, the rafters are kind of, they're well lit, right? Sure. It's really hard to, to hide anything up there, especially if you take one look and you notice anybody. Um, but yeah, you're, you're kind of looking around and you notice that right around like one of the corners of one of the pillars where one of the doors is, uh, there is kind of a, a shaded area. Like the sunlight doesn't hit there. It creates this, this really dark corner. And for just a moment, you think you see this, like, glint of eye shine. Uh, I mean, she's just gonna stomp, like, walk with full purpose, um, and reach into the shadow and grab whatever's there. Not even thinking about it, just grab it. Okay. Um, go ahead and give me a, a strength roll as you are attempting to grapple something. <laughs> Wow. Well, that's a as a fourteen. Is that as okay. a is that athletics or strength for strength? Uh, it, it is athletics. If you have anything bonus to athletics, no, that's fourteen. Okay. Um. Okay. So, Betty, you draw your hand back, and uh, as you you clutch this uh, fistful of cloth, and and pull forth. Um, a, a luma, um, the smaller uh, bird individual, kind of like a um, very pigeon-like, uh, who kind of just like gasps a little bit, as as you can see that they are wearing these uh, these goggles uh, that uh, are kind of covering their eyes, and you you pull them for the <gasps> and you have them just kind of like right around the the scruff right there. So I think she. Swings them around into the room and looks at Asher. Who is this? Uh, I, I don't know. She'll reach over and pull the goggles off. A any anything? Do do you recognize them now? There's so many people that come in and out of the council. There's so many people who just bring in letters and. Before he can finish, she shakes. The Luma. Speak! Who are you? And you can see, like, her face is completely blank. Uh, give me an intimidation check. All right, all right, let's go. Mm. And, uh, does Mochi have time to cast a zone of truth while Betty is, um, What's shaking the pigeon? Time? Shaking the pigeon. Shaking the pigeon. Not, not a euphemism. Uh... Ah, oh, never mind. Oh. We're not wait no, the barbarian isn't waiting for this. Shake that pigeon. Uh, it's a 19. Okay. I've just, I, I'm just, I'm just, a, like you said, I'm just a simple courier. I was, I was here to deliver, um, I was here to deliver a letter. And I, I, nothing else. Argus will approach them. 
Fuck it. It just like dumps out this this bag of all this stuff. Uh, there it is. All, all of the things that I was I was carrying. Then bends down slowly. Then why hide? Here's all these tanks. He's just trying to make a little extra, little extra gold and just see what I heard. What up to here? Uh, are we, are we near the doors, to the room? Relatively. I mean, okay. probably within twenty feet of them. Okay. I think um, uh, Betty just kind of keeps a hold of like his scruff or their um, you know, like if they're wearing a scarf or whatever she's got a hold of. Mm -hmm a hold of it and drags them over to the door with her and slams her fist on the door waiting for one of the guards to open it up uh yeah as you slam the the guards are very quick to to open it from there and she pulls the luma over to her and she says to them do you recognize this person it's it's one of the couriers that, that came by why were they hiding in here did you let them in and just leave them to their own devices? And she looks back over her shoulder at Asher and being like, you've got a much bigger problem than you think you do. He is just like, keep kneading like the, the inside or the upper part of his, his snout. Guards, um, your shift is over. Please find your replacements immediately. And they go to protest and he just puts a paw up just, Please, your ship is over. Oh, wow, there, this is happening. Can Soren rummage through this person's stuff yeah. to make yeah. sure they're actually a courier? Uh, and will you yeah. insight on that courier? <laughs> Letters.llc. So, <laughs> Soren, give me investigation. Uh, Bochico can give me insight. I have a passive of 22. Do you want me to? Ooh, baby. That's <laughs> Yes. Uh, Soren, actually, you find something addressed to Asher from the tenders um, that has your name on it. It's not addressed to you, but it, it does have your name mm -hmm. on it. It's a very, um, like, cylindrical kind of shape object. Um, oh. You would find that there, are, there definitely are some letters to Asher and other council members here. Uh, you also find a, a letter addressed to Argus. So all of the ones addressed to the council, I'm going to just like small, small um, creature. So, you know, hold them all up. Um, these are for you. Um, this one has my name on it. Um, can I open this one? Sure. It's from the tenders. Yes, yes, okay. you may open that. Um, and then um, I'm going to go over to Clarence. Um, if, if if Argus is already upset, um, how, if I give them a letter that's addressed to them, do you think they'll be mad at me too? Not if you found it in the bag of the Luma. Okay. They're just very big and very um, <coughs> sharp. And yeah, scary. that's only when they're mad at you. Okay. Um, <coughs> um, King Argus, sir. And much as an owl's head turns to different noises, it is a direct look at you. He kind of pops to like a little bit of attention. Is like, um, I. I, I found this in the in ooh, I found this in the the bag of things. <laughs> Clarence uh, pushes him forward a step or two. <laughs> Here you uh, go. He'll turn and take it. It's addressed to you. Does it say? Does it? Does the letter say from who is it just addressed to me? Uh, it has the the seal on it from uh, the pirate king belt. Oh, yuck! Uh, he'll take it and open it. I'm also gonna uh, open this too. Well, I want to get to that letter in just a second, Mochi. What was your insight? 
24. Okay. Um, you are definitely picking up, like, I think you've lived around here long enough to see this isn't, like, you recognize this is a courier. This is somebody who has brought stuff to your dad before. And, like, judging by, the, like, everything he's carrying seems to be legit, but there's definitely, like, a little bit of fear, a little bit of, of hesitance as to, I thought this would be a simple job, and all of a sudden I'm in a lot of danger. I was just trying to make some extra gold. I didn't realize what I was getting myself into kind of thing. Um, Argus. Moji the... will just softly go, uh, he, he is actually like a, a courier here, though, so it's not like some recent find. Definitely making money on the side, but not like new new. I've seen him before, I've seen him around. I think when Mochi says that, Betty kind of deflates a little bit. Like, you can see the anger kind of seep away. But her eyes are still very hard. And she pulls the Luma in, like, real close. Like, uncomfortably close in the face. And she says, you better find a new job. And then just shoves him out the door. Um... Give me a... Actually, it's just, it's fun if, if this just happens. Yeah. Um, as you do, like, a bit of the, the cloth kind of rips away in your hand, mm. and you, you get something almost like from out their inner pocket. You get a letter that has a similar seal, same seal, as the one on, on Argus's letter. And that letter essentially confirms what your suspicions are, that this person was, was hired. Um, it's a simple job, the letter reads. You know, a hundred gold, listen, write back what you hear. Doesn't need to be verbatim, important notes only. Do this, you don't have to worry about money for a while. Mm. You know, quick, to, makes it seem very simple, very like innocent. Just, you're there anyway, just listen in. It's, it doesn't hurt anybody. You know? He needs to get go to jail immediately because they don't know what he said victimless crime you do throw him out the door to yeah because he he to be fair has not had the chance to to write back at least from what right. you all have been talking about mm -hmm. uh but you do throw him out the door into the arms of the waiting perch guard who are going to take him off uh to yes. to the the jail there but... that's espionage that's a oh boy he's going to <laughs> the Look, just, deepest I dungeon just want to point out no body no crime if you make this woman disappear <laughs> properly <laughs> that is in fact our very unfortunate motto. Uh, <laughs> Argus, your letter is is much is a much different tone. Mm -hmm. You know, congratulations on making it this far. I had absolutely no doubt. Rest assured that your lady love is still just as safe as you are and will remain as such. Look forward to your next correspondence at Salter's Court and do take good care of the item you carry. It is just as important to me as she is to you. If you remember nothing else, remember that. And it's signed. Balthazar Blackbones, Kay Roberts. There is almost a, a Ghibli quality of feathers raising mm -hmm. as as Seething isn't even the proper word for it. It's too weak of a word. Uh, as he just... Like, it's taking all the strength in his body not to rip the letter to sunders. As he looks over to Asher. He knows about the artifact. He knows we're bringing it down. And I'm guessing he wants it for himself. All I can ask is that you do whatever is within your power to keep it out of his clutches. Oh, I was going to shove it down his throat and make him choke on to death. Not his clutches, but it's something. We have to take his corpse to the temple. Mm -mm. The smell, Argus, the smell. 
I appreciate your imaginative solutions to problems, as always, to what feels best. When do we leave? I'm looking uh, at everybody I have else. A, a ship waiting for you. I have contracted out uh, Captain Langston Tinderfoot of the Eloquence. Um, I have paid him handsomely to ferry you all south and do so safely. He is uh, waiting for you on Salter's port. It, if you leave today by noon, you should you should arrive there within two to three days, depending on how, how muddy the roads still are. But I will send you with the fastest cart I can, unless you all have uh, transportation arranged otherwise. And like every everybody else can see, everyone else can see just how angry Argus is. And he's not been this angry. I don't think I don't think he was even this angry during the events of being back at the fortress. Like this is an anger that is brand new and way more clear. Well, let's get a move on. Argus will leave. Um, Asher goes to follow you out. I know you're heated, is I think the political way of putting it. I dug through my things and found whatever I could to try to assist you. Since you're going to see, there was and you and I are of similar build. There was a time when I was younger where I thought that I too may go to sea and explore and had, had a wayfarer's heart and that did not come to pass. However, I still bought all of the things, so I figure I might as well pass them on to you. And he hands over um, a jacket. Uh, it's kind of like, orn it's not super ornate, but it is, it is a captain's jacket, essentially. You know, it has, like, the, the filigree and everything on it. And I've just sent it to you. It's the seafarer's jacket. Uh, it is a magic item that uh, it gives you swimming speed, um, uh, equal to your walking speed. It's weird how it sectioned itself out there, but that, that is from um, Griffin Saddlebag. Uh, and it'll give you proficiency with water vehicles. It essentially, essentially makes you, like, good to sail, plus you get fog cloud and yeah other proficiencies and things like that so i hope this keeps you safe at sea and at least will keep you somewhat buoyant it's the least that i can do should i find myself able to do more i guarantee you i will do so i again i cannot apologize enough but know that my hope goes with you and my full support. And he just nods to you, turns back. Um, I want to address this. Kian, you, uh -huh. did you want to open your, uh, your package? Yes, please. Um, he's kind of gone away from everybody just because, um, he can feel the rage emanating off of Argus and he's like, I shouldn't have given the letter. I should have waited. I feel so bad right now. Oh, um, and then yes, yeah, starts to go open up the, the other package. Yeah, uh, kind of placing it on on one of the the tables and unwrapping it. Uh, you would find a a crook staff inside. Uh, this is made of like this living wood. You know, even even as you kind of like recognize it, you, you kind of get the vibe like, hey, I could maybe even talk to this kind of vibe off of it. Um, this is a staff of the four seasons, uh, at your, your will once per day, uh, it can adapt to one of the main four seasons, you know, uh, spring, summer, winter, fall. And with that, it will give you a different, uh, list of spells that you can cast directly through it, uh, as well as some other just bonuses that you can use it as a quarter staff. Uh, and you get a note in it. Um, the tenders have been made aware of your presence and your journey. Know that 
you go with all of us where you go anywhere. A, a being of the wood, a being of the green is the same regardless of where they tread. Oh. Oh. So he's going to take his staff off of his back. Oh. And at the top of his staff, he's tied like a topaz to it. Mm -hmm. Notice he did not try and auction that off. <laughs> and goes like kind of like unravels it and unties it um, and ties it on top of the new uh, staff. Uh, and while he's here, uh, he likes making friends. Um, I would like to cast Speak Plants on it because you said I could talk to it. Mm -hmm. um, and as I cast Speak with Plants, um, um hi. Um my name's Soren. Um what's your name? Uh you can tell that it is in uh the form of spring right now. Uh as it just kind of has these like these budding flowers on it. Um, you know, it's like the, nothing's fully bloomed just yet. Mm -hmm. Um hello. I'm well, I'm not sure. I'm um, the staff of Four Seasons, I suppose. Mm. I'm very new to this. I'm so sorry. Hello, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I just think it's it's um. I think the staff of Four Seasons is probably your title, um, and I think you can choose your name if you want. It's up to you, though. If you want me to call you the staff of Four Seasons, I can. Hmm. Can I be Clarence? No, I have I, mm, I have a Clarence. Oh. You can be Clarence as well, but that's going to get real confusing. Well, when I think about it right now, I am budding. I could be Bud. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, nice to meet you, Bud. Um... You too, sorry. Are you are we going somewhere? Yeah. Um, um from the sounds of it, we're going to go fight some pirates. Um, and then we're gonna go fight the elements, basically. Oh my. I well, think I know. will do my best. I think I'm gonna like you a lot. I really <laughs> like you a lot. <laughs> oh, so yeah, and as like Soren like attunes to the staff, um, though those flowers that were on it kind of transform just a little bit, and they start taking on like the the form of like desert flowers, like a little cactus mm -hmm. here pops up, a little bulb there, um, like a um, a succulent, all, like is going up all around it, and at the top of it, it's got his uh his uh his crystal on top of it. And it's like, um, the tenders gave me a staff. Cool. Yeah. And it talks. Ar Argus is already gone. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody's, <laughs> just like, everybody's just feeling a little rough right now. And like, as he sees, like, Argus is gone, it's like, should I have waited to give him the note? No. That no. would have made it worse. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Are we ready to go? Can I talk to your staff when we're on the boat? I want to talk to Mochi. They're really nice. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I, yes. I was changing flowers. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're beautiful. <laughs> um, if they want, like, if they feel like talking, they'll talk. Um, I don't know if you can understand them, though. We'll find out. On the boat. Yeah. I think we should probably go with Argus before he sets sail without us. Yeah, he's probably already halfway there. Um, Put it on my back. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So, you will begin to prepare for your, uh, your the, the final steps of your, your voyage to Salter's Port. Um, let's see. So... I was there last week. God damn it. 
<laughs> I know you've got you've done this back and forth, like Betty's heading in back as well. Um, okay, so Argus is already headed out. Um, Betty, uh, Mochi, anything that you two wanted to do? I'm good. Cool. Final checking with parents. You 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 head down to your parents, and your mom has um, packaged something for you, very nicely wrapped. I'm not sure why I did this. You're literally going to wear it, but appearances are appearances. Um, and this is, she presents you with the amulet of buoyancy, uh, which is a necklace that, uh, let's see, you can use your reaction to immediately stand up when you're knocked prone. Um, and if you start your turn underwater with zero hit points, you immediately rise 60 feet to the surface. Thank you, Mom. Uh, I'll, your dad I'll try also... not to be Love under a life zero jacket. midpoints <laughs> in the water. Yeah. Love it. I'm try not uh, to your dad this. also hands you uh, something. like He did not wrap it. It's just like, it's a worn pair of goggles. And he goes, I, I worked on these. And they do they do things. They do stuff. I've, I've discovered that they do things. Um, dad, I want you I to will... have them. I, 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 I love them. Uh, Mochi will take the goggles she bought yesterday and just sort of trying without her dad seeing it to sort of <laughs> eat them. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna find out everything they can do. I know they can help you see invisible things. Um, <gasps> um, they have different lenses. You gotta flick through the lenses. I will <clears throat> phrasing, flick through all the lenses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, all right. Uh, you, you, you're going still, right? Like you didn't change your mind. Leaving now. Sorry, Dad. Uh, oh. I okay. I can offer you a hug, but it's gotta be timed. It, can't, it cannot be as long as yesterday, please. So just ten minutes. Deep breaths. Mm, shorter. Okay. We're taking them. We're taking them. There's one. There's two. Breathe. Breathe. Just, it's all good. Okay. All right. All right, Mochi, you're going to be great. You're going to be fine. She's going to be fine. And your mom, like, but I have to imagine you, your parents have the, the short short guy, tall woman effect going on. Yeah. Or she just looks da like, Dad, much rotunder. Yeah. Just, just uh, a, like, like the, a circle and a line. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, Thank you so much. Everything's going to be great. Look, I've got half looking out for me. Ish. Yeah. Like. Oh. You know, she doesn't care about a lot of things, but I'm currently uh, at least top five favorite high priests. It's going to be golden. We're going to be good. Huh. Okay. All right. That's yeah, comforting. I don't think there's anything written at all. All right. It's, Dad, it's half. You know what she's like. Look, the top five is pretty freaking great. It's pretty good. Right? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Look. All right. Uh, she, most people half turn to mom and go like, um, I don't know how long your holiday here is, but maybe extend it a little bit. Anyway, gotta go by. Best of luck. Waddles off. Before uh, we can okay. hug her again, and we never leave. Uh, Clarence, you go to leave the doors, and once again, that voice in your head. Clarence. I'm not going to say that I'm disappointed in your choice to not steal take what was rightfully yours, the necklace from me. However, I would love to give a little something to you from my past. A bit of a brief treasure hunt, if you will. Oh my gosh, I was actually totally gonna ask you if there was like a treasure hunt. I mean, not necessarily a treasure hunt, but like if you had something, because, you know, Going out into the, to the great big. Yes. Uh, yes, we, well, not weirdly enough, but uh, you and I have quite a bit in common in the sense that I too was a bit of musician in my time and also a collector of uh, magical items that might help in my endeavors here and there. So, um, you take the steps to the right of the council and head up to the upper branches. I doubt anyone's found it. You might be the first to uncover this secret stash I left. 
Oh. Okay. Uh, and following the directions of the skull in your bag, you, you get up to the upper branches uh, where he instructs you to dig into the the branches, actually, like, cut away at some of the, the bark on, on the alder heart. Do you do that? Um... Now, is this going to hurt the tree? Not any more than a mosquito would hurt you. Uh, I guess they're more annoying than actually, like, hurtful. Agreed. Okay. I'm sorry, tree. Uh, Clarence is going to, like, carefully remove this, like, these, like, pieces of bark and, like, set them to the side with the intention of placing them right back. Okay. <laughs> And inside, Clarence, uh, you find a small lockbox uh, that is not locked. And opening it up, uh, you would find a pair of gloves, fingerless gloves. These are the gloves of the Grim Fandango, as they appear in the Griffin Saddlebag. Uh, so you already have some barred stuff, but this gives you just a little bit of boost to it. And you can see that the gloves have like this red skull-like design where like every knuckle bone is like a tooth on the skull um very like you know early 2000s hot topic oh yeah um, oh yeah and you also find a uh, rather sizable uh flawless diamond inside wow you don't have to worry about money clarence and this will get you quite far yeah also, can't you use diamonds in resurrection ceremonies? You're so smart, Clarence. You're so smart. I did go to magic school. I, like, literally was the best student. Mm-hmm. So was I. Oh, you went to school, too? We should totally gab about that. Okay, well, I uh, really appreciate this. Um, I think these gloves are, are really good and excellent, and I'll take really good care of the diamond. Um... I'm going to need you to tell me everything that you know about the sea and boats and traveling the world. But you don't have to do that right now, but we should probably do it as we're like, you know, traveling and walking. I'll do it when you sleep so your subconscious will pick up on it. Um, no, I feel like I should be actively listening. All right, then. Um, like if you could put a hands on it, it's all right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Cool. So, um, as you all, uh, let me, well, let me ask this just as we, we can at least get to, to soldier's port. Uh, what means of conveyance are we taking? Are we hiring Greg and Buttercup or are we using, uh, Asher's, uh, his wagons and carts and whatnot? I think considering the, uh, uh, Argus's state of mind, the fastest one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you, you all go down to see this uh, this rotund hedge. Oh, hello, Sorin, and you found you found others. Hello, I am Greg. Hi, <laughs> Greg. Uh, hey, Greg. This is my best friend, Greg. You um, look really familiar. Not all of you. You, the tall, uh, the, the the soggy lady. Not so much, but. Um, uh, oh yeah, no, we end in winter. <laughs> the soggy <laughs> lady is crazy. <laughs> Betty oh, like legit <laughs> looks down and like smells herself. She's like. Yeah, your matcha, yeah. and yeah, matcha, Argo, me. and yep. clearance. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> three for three. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm so sorry about your exploding friend. Yeah, we are I tried. <laughs> where's uh, where's your dirt friend? Oh, he's up in uh, the observatory. Yeah, doing dirt oh, stuff. It's a, it's a metaphor. Yeah, well, I'm sorry for that one too. Honestly, what was so his name Vicodin? Is that is that right? Voltrex. Hmm, Voltrex. Yeah, Voltra. That's the yeah. one. Got That's it. Together. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, uh, yeah, you're looking to looking to head back. Oh, yeah. Port. Uh, going to port, actually. 
Eh, fuck it, I got free time. Hey, Greg! <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's Greg. Don't make, the, don't take Greg with you. I beg you, please, don't, don't do this to me. No, he's uh, coming. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Argus is brooding life and death, and we're like, Greg! Hey! hey it's yeah. Greg's time! It's Greg uh, time, we Christian, I'm so sorry we're doing this to Argus, but we gotta bring Greg. I mean, hey, no, like, do, hey, Argus is in his own mind space right now. <laughs> Whatever shenanigans happen, they happen. This happened in the winter time. It's not gonna change. It's gonna change. This, is, this is the party dynamic. It's not, look, it's been months. We didn't mature or exactly. anything. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be silly and goofy. It's not gonna. Yeah. I'm not expecting a vanguard of, of people. And of also no. death. And also death. <laughs> Greg loads up the cart <laughs> with all of you, some goods, uh, some stuff he can trade, uh, and uh, you know, hooks up Buttercup, and and off to the roads you go, uh, cutting through the the muddy sections, splashing through the puddles. And, and carving your way through the drier bits of dirt, uh, you you take off for Salter's port. Greg kind of turns back to the, this, this wagon just full of heroes. So, weird thing, I have a condition where I don't have to sleep. So you all can just get to like sleep the whole time. And I'm going to get us there uh, before you know it. So, uh, oh. you know, bang, That's bang, great. boom, get some snoozles. Uh, hey, Greg? Yeah. Does your cousin have that same um, condition? What the fuck did you say about my cousin? I ran into him at the tree. We're turning back. <laughs> turning this whole thing around. Did Mochi just like put a little raccoon paw over Soren's mouth? And just... <laughs> He's kidding. He's joking. Just keep driving to the port. Everything's good. Soren, I swear to half, if you don't stop talking right this fucking second, I will turn you into mud rather than sand. That jerk owes me an ambulance of health. Oof. Oh, yeah. No, that's terrible. You know what? If we make it back from the jungle, we will help you get that amulet of health. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we're heroes. It's what we do. Yeah, it's what we do. Soren. Yeah, I got to do like a 20 point turn with this thing anyway. Buttercup tends to jackknife. So it's probably best we just keep going. Hey, that's it's the like, spirit, gosh. The Garrick. That's the spirit. Oh, yeah. Emoji. Soren just licks your hand. It's <laughs> just like, ah. You think you're going to get sticks. mochi with that? She has 20 cousins. <laughs> oh, Her family hey. invented the wet willy at this point. <laughs> he stops resisting and just like slumps his shoulders. He's like, thank you. Even in the fucking humble wood, I, get, I, get, I, I, I deal with the mess. I deal with the mess. <laughs> just deal with the mess when we come back from saving the world. And he just gently nudge you away from Greg. I didn't know that he was going to want to go fight the man. Of course he was going to want to go fight the man. Why do you think the man tried to run away? I thought he was just a coward. Uh, both <laughs> things are true. <laughs> both things are true. And as your journey commences, uh, we will pick up next time as you all reach Salter's port. And uh, maybe you get on a boat that time. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Best laid plans. Uh, yeah. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of Humblewood Yonderbound. I am Derek Sword. I've been your GM for this game. Uh, I appreciate so much just seeing people in chat, and I appreciate these folks here playing with me especially so very, very much. Uh, thank you to them for coming back, for playing these amazing characters, for telling this amazing story, uh, and just, like, keeping it fun. Keeping it fun the whole time. Uh, there's some cool stuff coming up from Sword and Key soon. I will say, typically I save it to the end, but after this at 3 p.m. Pacific time, so like in two hours from now, less than, I'm going to be in another game because it's my birthday tomorrow. So I'm doing a special charity one shot of a game called Midwestern Moms, where I am playing with the very lovely Ally Mac as well as uh, Space Jamber, Amber from uh, as a Space Jamber. Uh, we're all playing Midwestern Moms, and uh, we're going to have a bake sale and. It's probably like the the lowest stakes TTRPG I have ever played, and I'm very excited just for that. So uh, please check that out. We are raising money for Canine Companions for Independence, which is a cause that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, also, we are going to have applications out for uh, the month of October, whether tonight or tomorrow. Um, I'm just waiting to hear back about dates for one game, but we have five, six games uh, that you can apply to play in throughout the month. Various different things. It's going to be really, really fun. Um, so, if you ever want to be on Sword and Key, 
check that stuff out. We'll have the application out on our Discord first, and then social media second. It'll be out for just about a week. Uh, so, that in mind, get, get your applications in uh, quick, uh, so you don't want to miss out. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and go around and have these lovely people say a little bit about themselves, where you can find more of them. So, Shadow, if you don't mind starting us out. Ah, yes, I'm Shadow. You can find me everywhere relevant at the Shadow Sylvia. I'm here on Sword and Key quite often, you know, Humblewood and also Gate Night on Tuesdays, but not for the next two weeks. But we, we will return. We're almost done with Act One. It's a good time. You should come hang out with us. Um, sometimes we also say things and then we forget about that we said those things and then Eva clips those things and then uh, we remember that we said those things, words in those orders that happened. Yep. Uh, it's a good time. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> I'm over on Rolly 5, where you can catch me there uh, doing random things. Um, next next week, yeah, next week, Wednesday yeah. the 25th, uh, I'll be with two of our fabulous uh, Sword and Key members, actually, uh, Mitch and Mare, uh, joining me over there as we're going to play a game called Fortune Favors, uh, which is literally the rule book is in, like one of those fortune tellers that you used to use. You know what I'm talking about. Um, it's the gonna be a cootie time. catcher. Cootie yeah, catcher. Yeah, yeah. Cootie catcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's how that's the game essentially. It's I a love good that. time. Um, that's everything. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Shadow. Uh, next up, Liz. Hi, friends. I'm Liz. I have been. Betty Brightpaw, uh, the brand new barbarian who finally got to show a little bit of her uh, s scary side today. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you didn't, well, the VOD will be available very shortly. So go back and watch it. Um, I'm here on Sundays, and that's basically the only place you can find me doing any streams right now. Oh. So, um, But you can also check the link in the chat. I need to think. I think I need to update that maybe. Um, yeah, if you need dice bags, hit me up. That's where I'm at right now. I have a lot, so I have a surplus, and I'm happy to share them. <laughs> I actually might hit you up that. Uh, next up, Keon. Hello, you beautiful people. I am Keon. I go by Brother Keon across all of the internets. That is B-R-U-T-H-A-Q-U-E-O-N. Um, I played Soren. I love this little gecko dude so damn much, and now he has a staff that he could talk to and bother people with oh it's about to be great um but yeah uh what do i have going on sorry i gotta look at my calendar um only thing important that i have going on streaming wise this week is i will be over on bipoc vamp day um for eat the right on friday and i'm very excited about that because we get to do um some malicious things as vampire people and zombies and i am very very happy um outside of that i have been working a lot on a lot of projects in the back room that i can't talk about right now and sooner or later hopefully i can talk about them and i can't wait for you guys to enjoy them and be a part and see them um and lastly um we are 15 days away from tales of story dropping which is my merch store which is going to be all amazing dice dice merch and everything for, you know, streetwear for the table, for the people who love all the stuffs. I got hats, I got hoodies. I figured out a way to do embroidery, so I am very excited and very happy. So yeah, um, when that drops, I think you guys will be one of the first ones to actually see it. So can't wait. That's me. Sorry, I lost my Zoom there for a second. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Keon. Uh, next up, Anik. Hi, my name is Anik. You can find me on the internet at Anikster. I'm going to try and get this done before my dogs start barking their idiot heads off again. I got to play Matcha today. Uh, the amazing Mike Beck, Raccoon, Trickster, everything. I love her so much. Uh, definitely making new friends. And uh, for now, I'm here on Sundays playing Matcha. And uh, one of those games for October, Derek mentioned, is me running a... I was going to make it a one-page hack, but it turned into a two-page hack of our Woodland Gods. Uh, which is basically that you're a cute little forest animal and uh, you're in a cult. <laughs> Thematic. Uh, and your god died, so now you have to find a new god. 
Um, so yeah, if that sounds like something that you might like to play, uh, keep an eye on the Discord and eventually other socials for Sinoforms. And then other things need planning and dates and time zones. So ugh, so many plans, so little time. Uh, after Humblewood, there will be God, which one were we doing first? Panic Tales from the Loop, 80s Swedish creep ship, and then after that, there's more mothership. So just all of it is on Sword and Key. So just keep an eye on the Sword and Key socials. Everything will pop up on there eventually. It's true. How it works. Uh, last but absolutely not least, Christian. Hey everybody! Hi. Hey. Gotta gotta unbrew for a moment. Everybody, my name is Christian, aka Fluffy Goomba. Hey, Fluffy Goomba, all over the internet. I'm a performer, educator, and event coordinator here in the space. Uh, this game is a hoot and a holler. And yes, I said hoot on purpose. <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully, Greg will save the day. Uh, and we'll even make Argus laugh. And I'm I'm interested to see where where this adventure takes us. This is this is uh, this is interesting interesting uh, uh, little little quest you got us on there, Derek. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm I'm hoping you all are enjoying it so far. I also don't know exactly where we're gonna go, but uh, we'll all find out together. I I have an A and a B, and sometimes that B turns into a J by the time you all get there. So this will be uh, this will be a fun little exploration into uh, the three pages of Tangle Wild content that has currently been created by Hitpoint Press. Um, I am Derek Sword. I use CM pronouns. I've been your GM for this game as for I am for many games. Uh, for let's see, there's not much for specifically myself. I will say uh, the first week in November. I think it's November third. I'm gonna double check. Uh, it is November third. Uh, we will not be playing Humblewood because I will be over on Daltrian's channel running a game of, uh, it's an Eberron one-shot for Extra Life. It's a charity campaign. Uh, it's like the only time I'll ever be on anybody else's channel. So check that out. It'll be 8 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, the slot has filled up, unfortunately, but there are other games that Valdrian is is uh, going to be running. Or not running, but other people are going to be running on Valdrian's channel that still have some time slots if you want to play in any of those. For Sword and Key, uh, let's see. Today is the 15th, so uh, like I said, Midwest Moms, the TTRPG, will be playing at 3 p.m. Pacific time in just about uh, just under two hours now. Uh, that'll have Anik and Amber in it as well, and uh, we'll be run by the very lovely Eva. And we're just going to, and also I do want to say a special thank you to two people. I don't want to forget saying this. Uh, special thank you to Michael, uh, Michael Sandoval, uh, as always, for the artwork for this game, M-I-K-Y-L, Sand Oval, can't forget it. Uh, and Kayla for running production. Kayla will also be running production for Midwest Moms. So special thank you to Kayla for putting in essentially six hours of production work today. It's massively appreciated. Um, Midwest Moms is going to be a fun TTRPG. Uh, just, you know, just just Midwest Mom tropes. It's just it's just going to be goofy. And we're raising money for K Companions for Independence. Uh, tomorrow is the return of Journey to Books End at 3:30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, that is the second episode, so definitely check that out. It's, you still have plenty of time to uh, check out the first episode on Twitch and our VODs. Uh, the rest of the week is a little quiet since uh, Gate Night and Zenith are both taking the week off. However, we do have our movie night, uh, which you can join through our Discord. Um, the Discord has uh, lots of cool people, cool things to talk about, and also we do bi-weekly movie nights. So we are doing our monthly Ghibli Watch uh, with Castle in the Sky. Uh, and then 21st, we'll have the return of Horizons Call. We had to take this week off for some some health and tech issues, uh, but hopefully those will be resolved. So we'll be back um, at 3 p.m. Pacific time on the 21st. Uh, 22nd, that's Sunday, we will have the next episode of Monster Crush, which is a podcast that LD and I record, where we talk about different cryptids, creatures, miscellaneous monsters from myth, and how smushable they are, how, how sexy monsters can be. Uh, so we have not yet recorded this next episode, um, but uh, it's, it's sure to be a good one. Our last episode did release just recently, so you can check that out wherever podcasts are found. Uh, but we really, we try to release every other week. That said, I'm very busy, so it typically comes out in the middle of the week after it's supposed to. Whatever. 
Uh, Humble will be back on the, the 22nd. We'll play every Sunday unless otherwise noted. Journey to Book's End plays on every Monday unless otherwise noted. Zenith plays on every Thursday unless otherwise noted. Uh, and we'll be back on the 26th at uh, 4.30 p.m. Pacific Time. And Gate Night should be back on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time on October 1st. So it plays every Tuesday. October is going to be busy. We've got a lot of stuff lined up. Uh, we have, uh, first of all, we're doing double features every Friday throughout the month. We're not doing our, our monthly Ghibli watch. We're doing um, just Halloween, scary, spooky uh, monster movies all throughout the month. So the, our traditional games will still play, including Horizons Call, which is going to play every Saturday, Journey to Books End on Monday, Gate Night on Tuesdays, Zenith on Thursdays. But uh, we are doing double feature movie nights every Friday. Uh, let's see, we have on, planned on the 12th, we have a one-shot of Slayers, uh, from, um, uh, Spencer Campbell with Gila Games, uh, that I will be running. Uh, we have A Night of Fright Part 2, which is a Scooby-Doo d and I got the same cast back for that. They're gonna be playing on the 13th and 20th. Uh, we have the Woodland Gods one-shot that Nick mentioned at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time on the 18th. It's Friday. And then a Monster of the Week one-shot at 10 a.m. on the 26th. That's Saturday. And then we have Stop Flaming Preps, which is the My Immortal TTRPG uh, created by LD. If that means nothing to you, you've lived a much more, a much better life than mine. Uh, if you know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm so sorry. Uh, but My Immortal is some, uh, like, peak early 2000s Hot Topic-esque, like, gothic uh, Harry Potter smut fanfic that was written it's just it's like it's the best and the worst at the same time and ld made an entire game about it it's great um we are still waiting to hear back on a game of call of cthulhu which is a cat based call of cthulhu game and that should play on a wednesday in october we just haven't heard yet what wednesday that is so as soon as i hear about that i will let you uh i will put the application out let you all know and you are open to apply to it from there a lot of multiple games in fact uh, you know see what sticks so, uh, like I said, we have uh, movie nights throughout the month. We're doing vampires the first week. We're doing um, like recent classics in the the second week. We're doing like high level monster movies. Uh, the, I would think it's Hunter versus the Hunted is the the concept, and then we're doing classic slashers. And yeah, that wraps us. That's oh God, it's gonna be a busy week or a busy month, but it's gonna be great. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to collect my thoughts after all of that, and there's there's so much going on, but I appreciate all of you for donating to Fauna and Flora International, for spending time with us. Um, again, we're, we're trying to raise money for a number of great causes. Zenith is raising money for PCRF. Uh, we're raising money for Fauna and Flora. I'm raising money for Canine Companions for Independence later. Um, there's plenty of great causes to put your money towards. It's always very appreciated when you spend the time and kind of, you know, also spend a little bit of the extra money that you have sitting around. As always, Willing and able are, are both important things. Uh, money's tough these days, so take care of yourself. Uh, but if you have a little extra sitting around, it always the, the great causes always appreciate it. Um, I think that's it. If anything else I forgot, I will bring up uh, in, literally in less than two hours, in like an hour and a half at this point. So thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. Uh, as always, remember the Humblewood motto is no body, no crime, no drama. I, I will see you in an hour and a half. Everyone else, I, hopefully, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. That's all right. Rude. Oh, it let me do it. <laughs>